Hello and welcome to Creative Rodeo. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have a phenomenal, phenomenal guest today. Um, but if you have not been here before, this is basically the show where we bring on creative developers and we learn uh, some fantastic techniques from them. It's, it's more of a show where uh, we want to learn a certain topic and we bring on someone who's great at that topic and they kind of walk us through it and we're able to collaborate with them. So uh, our guest today, Steve, has uh, lots and lots of knowledge about uh, Green Sock Scroll Trigger and 3JS and oh my gosh, lots of follows. Thank you so much. Got it right over my face. I don't know why I placed that there. <laughs> Let me do this. Um, yeah, so our guest today, Steve, he's got tons of uh, 3JS and Green Sock experience. And we have kind of a general idea for where we want to go, but there's nothing like pre-made that, that we are working towards. We're both kind of get, kind of be collaborating and building together. And I might say, hey, what if we did this? And Steve would go, sure, great. Or I have a, I have a cooler idea, right? Um, but so yeah, that's what today's about. We're going to be learning together, chat. I want your suggestions here. I want you to be piping in saying, it'd be awesome if this thing spun around and did a cool thing and we, we go... Awesome suggestion, chat. Chat, thank you, right? So it's a whole co collaborative thing we brought on. I, I appreciate the follows. I'm, I'm, I'm going to acknowledge them in a second. Thank you so much. Uh, this isn't me uh, hating these follows. I just want to make sure that you can see me. Um, but yeah, so it's going to be a whole lot of fun. Without further ado, without any more uh, abs absurdity from just me, let's bring in uh, today's guest, Steve Gardner. Steve, how are you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And chat, let us know if there's any audio issues. Okay. Don't, don't, um, worry about just dropping them in right there. Uh, I, I, I would, I would rather fix it now than find out after the stream that you emailed me and say, Hey, I, no one can hear Steve. So just <laughs> let us know. Um, and thank you for all those follows Ksor and Rudix world and Ksor again and, uh, isotoxin. Thank you for all those follows. So, so fantastic. And Ben's here. We got Mike here. We got Anthony here. Uh, I saw Liam here. Liam's on next week. I'm super excited about that. Lots and lots of people are here. Um, and most of all, Steve, you're here. And Well, Steve, you're back. You've been here on the stream before, but not this specific show. But um, people might know you from your Beat Burger. I'm actually going to bring that up real quick. But uh, do you want to kind of give a brief explainer about who you are, what, what, what you like to get up to? Sure. So yeah. So I'm Steve. I uh, I'm a developer at We the Collective. Um, uh, yeah, and I kind of like. Uh, but that's recent. Sort of that, that, that that's is a recent, recent thing, yeah. and uh, and I'm thrilled about it. Yeah. I'll explain why soon. But keep going. You're doing great. Yeah, uh, I guess most people online might know me from like Copen and stuff. So I do a lot of Copens, like trying to. I kind of do that mostly to learn new things, which is kind of why it's all over the place. Like I might be doing an SVG thing one week and then a three JS. That's, that's Copen, my man. All that's sort what of it things, is. but uh, yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. But uh, yeah, that's kind of my thing, just like playing around with web stuff and. Yeah. Yeah. No. So and uh, we the collective is this fantastic agency. Um, where our friend Liam works and our friend Andy and a couple other people um, work. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I don't know who all I can shout out from there, but now you are there and it's, I'm, just, I'm just cheering in the background because y'all are like some of my favorite developers and you're just, you are literally We The Collective vising into one place and it, I, I can't wait to see what, what you come out with next. Um, but... Uh, I want to show off some of your work real quick. Um, so what people might might know you from on this show is this fantastic Beat Burger. Um, hey, Alistair, good to see you. And uh, um, Amit's here. Uh, and Liam is Shub there in, in the chat. And thank you for those follows. Um, so this, we, we built for the heavy metal burger joint theme. Um, and when I say we built is that you told me what to type. You made this. <laughs> um, and... This is a hamburger or cheeseburger rather that turns into a drum kit. Uh, it's all in 3JS. Um, it is fully playable. People have hooked this up to their actual like um, drum kit, like uh, an electronic drum kit, I guess is is what those are called. Um, yeah. And that they've they've actually been been able to play this with their physical drum kit. You can play it with the keyboard. It's super super fun. Um, people loved this, and this was a blast to build on screen uh, on stream with you. And oh shoot, uh, I realized that today's steps are 
wrong. I'm just going to wipe them out for now. Maybe we'll come back to them at some point. I did not update those. So much to update. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, this was an absolute blast to make. And it's just so, so, so fun. Uh, Mac, good to see you. Adrian uh, says, every show Alex has a uh, show beat. Bur- uh, yeah. Every show I, I, I do show off Beat Burger. It's kind of the one that like I kind of keep going back to. Sorry. Um, but uh, And Ryan Labar, good to see you. Ryan's going to be coming on uh, next month. I'm really excited about that. Um, and then you have a whole, whole bunch of code pens. I think this one might be one of the ones that we um, want to look at for today. Yeah. Right? So yeah, we'll this probably is... Come. We may even like reference this one a few times. Perfect. I'll... I'll Keep it open then, because this is um, 3JS and Scroll Trigger, right? You you made this when Scroll Trigger first came out as like one of the initial demos, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it was just after actually. I was I was going to, but then I think I got it got out just a touch late. But yeah, it was just after. Got it. Yeah. So as you scroll through, uh, AirPlay tips around. I love the details of like the clouds covering the text. Like so many nice details there. It feels like there's actual depth to this whole thing. Um, and then this is like the the sweet, sweet, uh, I just love that transition where it just dips through <laughs> and then we get some specs on it. And it's just, it's I'm, I'm scrolling a little too fast, but really, really nice touches here. And then it uh, flies back out and it ends. And it's just, it's just super, super cool. And so uh, I, I asked you to come teach us how to do this basically, right? Like, how, can, can you kind of, Show us how to make a 3D scene that's animated through scroll. Because th- th- there's a whole ton of um, uh, like implementation possibilities with, with this kind of tech, right? Like you can have like, say you're doing a thing for uh, a pair of headphones, right? You can have them flip around and you can show off like the noise canceling over here and then flip around mm-hmm. and it shows like the comfy ear pads and right? Like like a really cool interactive experience rather than just like, a JPEG that that has like lines pointing to different parts of it, right? You can have it really yeah. eye catching and um, interesting, and and I think a lot of people, myself included, would love to learn from you how to do that. So that's what we're going to be going through today. Yeah, and hopefully, it, it, it's not going to be that complicated as well. I hope, I'm hoping uh, from my that people will, it will be a bit more approachable. Like it won't seem like this thing that's all that complicated. That's kind of hoping. That's my hope from all this. Like. Um, I, I was hoping to <laughs> to make people say this is too complicated yeah, and walk away yeah. from programming yeah. forever. Is what I was hoping several <laughs> people quit their profession today. But if you want right. to go the other okay. direction, well, we can I'll do that. I'll switch it up then. Yeah. I'll switch oh no, no. It up. I think we, <laughs> we can go for your idea. It's it's fine. It's fine. Oh. We can go for yours. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> people are just like, uh, too much, too much. Um, <laughs> So I, I want to catch up on chat a little bit. Xanadu says 3JS is very cool. I used to make human and blender uh to get 3d human model whose body measurement can be changed via their sliders oh that's cool so you can yeah. like pass properties to the model that's really cool wilster good to see you and christina good to see you thank that you uh, thank that you i'm thankful that you were able to make it for any amount of time it's always good to see you um glee js now vj with the puns good to see you vj um and andy's here just talking about you uh nice to see everyone excited for this one yeah it's gonna be great so um where do we want to start um hey simone um oh i just closed out of the thing that i was going to tab over to reopen close tab um so you've passed me uh, a couple of links one of them is this uh template and i'll drop this link into chat this is kind of the uh the show the show link if uh after this airs it, the uh video should be up there and right now i've got a couple of links there this is still like a work in progress page but for now you can access the stuff that we're going to be looking at here um, but yeah, so you sent me uh, a template and we're also going to be checking out, uh, the poem wonders. I don't know how to say that, that, that term, if you do go for it. Um, no, no, not a clue. It's okay. my, one of those many words that I've never said out loud and I, I, I don't dare even try. Like. Yeah, it's tough. I'm, I mean, uh, <laughs> we're working in a visual and audio medium. It's, there's, uh, it's hard to get around <laughs> it. Uh, but we're going to be working from their marketplace. Um, because so yeah. Point Miners is kind of the group that, among a lot of other things, does React 3 Fiber. And so they're really great at like shepherding uh, uh, 3D on the web. And so they were able to kind of create this marketplace that um, holds lots of cool 3D stuff that we're going to be able to use in our project, right? Yeah. And actually, they they make the 3JS Fiber, isn't it? And that's 
that'd be actually perfect for this like this is this that's a, that's a tool that would be really great for building we're not we're not going to use it today cool. but but if you were in react already and you wanted to build a, a, a thing like we're about to build then i would recommend that because that, that would make your life a little easier again i didn't want to add react into the yeah. into the mix today so we're yeah, keeping it, we simpler, did it for beat but, burger uh, right yeah beat, beat uh, burger kind was of. yeah it was fiber. kind of or was it not a little bit ah, uh, not no not fiber no, Got it. it was okay. a little bit of React in there, but it was just to get it, get get things on the page. Cool. Um, so we won't do that today. But sounds um, good. Yeah. So if uh, maybe we should start on that uh, template, and that template, yeah. like anyone can run, it creates a new uh, pen for for you. So if anyone's uh, wants to, you know, open it up on on their on their copen, it will create a new. Um, yeah. But just make sure uh, that uh, can, yeah. Can can someone try this on your end and just make sure that I'm not linking to? I'm I'm pretty sure I'm not linking to my template now but i just want to make i sure think yeah as you should save it will change that url okay, to cool, yours. Cool. yeah yeah so yeah, uh yeah. i totally forget about this this code pen feature uh where if you use template it's just going to allow you to create your own and i don't have to fork it that's that's awesome yeah yeah it's really nice um so i think what may, may be a good idea just to run through what this is because uh, like all 3js projects there's a little bit of work you have to do to get things up and running. Uh, and I didn't want to spend like 20 minutes, half hour kind of writing all that. So it's kind of, that's, this is kind of it written already. So maybe what's worth doing is just for now, if you go into your JS and just comment out a good chunk of it and we'll uncomment it and I'll and explain it as we go. So maybe okay. all the way from, from the, near the top, if you just do, yeah, so from the bottom, so <laughs> from scene. So scene, okay, everything cool. there down, we'll just get rid of all that. Cool. And, and then, then we'll uncomment as we go. I guess I could just move uh, the thing. All, oh, hold on. I'm screwing up with the keyboard. There we go. Cool. All right. So, yeah. So, so, so I'm just going to run through what I, maybe we'll just start on HTML so, so we, we, we know what we're looking at. Yes, so, HTML has got two things uh, just a container, and that's all it is a container for the canvas. Okay. Um, 3JS will put put its canvas in there later and then the um the page which is where we'll put all our content cool um and then in the css you'll see that uh canvas container is a fixed position so it's always going to be at the top and fill the page okay uh, no matter how far we scroll it's just going to always be there okay and it's uh behind so z index one and then the page is z index two so the page is going to sit on top of this um fixed position canvas Got it. okay and that's kind of all there is right now so that's okay. a blank page and then i stick in a console clear i always do that on copen because copen refreshes an iframe or something and that doesn't clear the console log oh, good um, tip. so that can be a bit frustrating Got so it. i just clear that every time and then and then we're importing a, a bunch of stuff so we're importing three uh, and then we're, we'll have to import something else for three later, but we'll, we'll, we'll add that in a bit later. Okay. And then we're pulling in GSAP and scroll trigger, which there's no, we're not using that yet in this code, but we will be later. Cool. And then we just need to register the plugin. All right. And then there's just some um, colors and um, pi. Pi is useful later, so I just saved it rather than have to type math pi every time. Cool. Sounds good. So if we, um, if we grab the scene part, so just grab that part now. Just gonna slide that down. There we go. Cool. Yeah. And see if that changes. Is that gonna add anything? Oh, no, so that doesn't do anything. So um, that won't change anything. But that, so what that is is this scene is uh, for those unfamiliar with 3JS. Scene is kind of where everything lives. So you need to create one of those, and then you put all your 3D models, all your lights, all your cameras in the scene. So that's kind of like the base thing. Uh, and then we're gonna say we've got a background color, and now we're just grabbing that from the colors above, uh, which I think cool. is just white right now. And then, uh, and then we have a fog as well. So the fog. So if we place anything, like we're going to place a, a, a floor in there in a bit. Okay. Uh, and, and, and we don't want that to be a solid kind of stop at the end. So there's a bit of fog just to kind of blend it in Got and have it. things nice. just fade out if they travel far back. Cool. And then we have the renderer. So if we just grab okay. the renderer. Just gonna drag this one down. And uh, people are asking about the uh, new code pen looking. Yeah, it, it, it got an update just like an hour ago or something apparently. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, and Liam, you have to set, um, like Vim code bindings or something like that. And then I can hold all uh, up and down. Like my VS code can, can <sighs> do it normally. Um, and I missed it and I complained about it on Twitter. I'm like, I wish that was there. And of course someone's like, it is just do this. And I'm like, thank and you. And so, yeah, now, now you can do that. I, if, um, r r remind me after the show, if you can't find it, 
because uh it's super handy so yeah i missed that too i'm glad yeah. you told me that because that's yeah. super annoying i'm always like doing that key shortcut and it's not it never works yep uh, cool so we got a renderer okay so we got the renderer we just set the anti-alias to true so the renderer is what draws things to the canvas so that's kind of so you got the scene and that's where we put all our things and then the renderer's job is to draw that scene with the camera and stuff cool. so we got some things here this is just to kind of set how it's going to render those things so it's got the um the encoding the color how it's going to interpret the colors and the tone mapping and the shadow maps as well so we're going to have shadows in this so we're just changing we're just tweaking the settings for that just to make it look a bit nicer gotcha and is this stuff uh, that like you uh carry from project to project or is this stuff that like you dialed in specifically because you wanted a certain look for this scene yeah no, so yeah, this is kind of what I carry over, and you, okay. you know, things like exposure and stuff, I tweak depending on the model and the light uh, I've got on the scene. But you know, it. it's 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 you know, you might not want to change depending on what you're doing. You may not want to change some of these. Um, you know, but this kind of for me seems to be a good set of, of, of yeah. options. So I I'm just trying just to start think with that and... for myself. If if I want to submit up a project tomorrow, can I come here and steal these, or is this a thing where like? from project to project the same way that like you know if i'm doing a website i might set up a whole bunch of color variables and change my fonts and change you know like like those vary wildly from site to site but some stuff like this like can this be relatively constant and you're it sounds like you're saying yeah you can just use this for the i certainly start part. with this and, cool. and then change it when i need to and you know i don't always have to so uh, yeah it. i think it's a good starting place cool okay. um yeah and then so we, we grab the container from the dom and then we tell the renderer or we to, to to place its canvas element in there. So we're appending the canvas element. So the renderer generates a canvas. Okay. And we place it in that container. Okay. So, so that's why we now have a black box in our, on our page. Ah, got it. Okay. So the and and so we have a black box. Let me see if I'm understanding. Because we've created a scene. Is this getting the scene yet? No. Not yet, no. This is okay. all the render at the moment. Cool. So it's just a render and said so there's no lights, there's really nothing to paint, so it's just there's painting. Nothing. We've not we've not even told of... it to draw anything yet. Oh, so okay. it's literally a blank canvas. Okay, um, got it. If cool. you were to look at that, it's got like a deep I don't think it's even got a defined height and width right now. It's kind of what the browser does when it throws the canvas, it just kind of draws one that big. Got it, okay. So cool. We're gonna make a camera now, and the cameras right. are pretty simple, so it's just um a perspective camera. So perspective cameras are um, like they will show uh, things will get smaller when they get further away and that kind of thing. You got um, what's the other one called? Um, orthographic. Called? That's right. Yes, and that's kind of like everything stays the same size. It's kind of like um, yeah. I think of that one with like, like a, a monument grip. valley kind of like. Yeah. I mean, it, like it doesn't have to be at that angle, but that's like the the isometric view would be an orthographic camera, right? Yeah, um, exactly use, that. Yeah. But but yeah, orthographic just means like it things that are far away aren't smaller everything is pretty much the, the same size right or like yeah okay yeah yeah that's right yeah um and then we just set some things so i think uh, the first one is um the uh the, the the lens sort of size the field of view and then we got the width and the height and oh that's actually the ratio so the width divided by the height and a few other settings. I think that's the near and far. So okay. the, the, the the number one point one is how close we are allowed to render stuff, and then far how far away it will render things before it will stop. Got it. Yeah, I've definitely dealt with this in like Blender, where as I zoom in on something, it starts to like eat away. It starts to like disappear a little too soon. You have to drop that to be smaller. Or if things are far away, they start to disappear. You have to make that bigger. It's basically like. Yeah, and you want to try right. not to make that too big. You really right. want to sort of dial that in so it's right for your scene. Because cool. if you make it just infinite, then it's just not going to be. It's going to be using up the CPU and what have you that you don't need. So you want to get that right. But cool. that's this is going to be fine for today. Yeah. Um, and then we we, we position it so we're sticking it uh, um, slightly up and slightly back. Um, so that's X. X is in the middle. So X is it's just so like like on normal screens. It's sitting right in the middle of the of, of the scene, and then it's um. It's one up. I think one is um, so. Okay. Y is up. It's one up and then two back. Got it. Okay. Cool. And those those numbers don't really mean anything. It's just like a, a scale that's like you can assign it to whatever. We could call that meters or we could call that miles. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's just the unit, it's, right? It's just yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. One unit. And then the, and then the target, which is just a vector three right now, and vector three is just a, a way of storing x, y, and z, and that's um, that's just set to zero one so a little bit this is it's looking right in the middle of the scene but up one unit 
Um, and that's not doing anything right now. We're not told it to do anything. That's just say, that's saved for later. Ah, okay. And then cool. we add the add the camera to the scene. So that's all we do. So that needs to be in the scene for it to to, to work. Makes sense. And then we've got right. the lights. Cool. Let's try. And cool. So we've got a directional light, and that's kind of like directional everywhere. So it's kind of it's shining a light in one direction from every kind of point in the sky. It's it, it's not like a um. Uh, what's the other one? Spotlight, where it's right. coming from one point. Directional light's coming from everywhere, but from in, in the same direction. Um, and we want that one to cast shadows. So then you want to, again, this is one of those things where I've kind of just sort of gone with the defaulty ones. Um, but you would, in reality, want to tweak this. So the okay. camera far is how... So the way this works is it kind of takes a picture from the light's point of view and generates a shadow map, it's called. So the the cam the light itself actually has a camera that that it renders. Right. So we huh. need to say this camera can see ten. We don't want it to see like two hundred because that's just going to be more work because it has to render that and then it renders the main scene. So the more you know, the more the, the further it does, the more work it's got to do. And then we're saying how big we want that that picture essentially to be. Uh, a normal bias. I don't actually remember what that is, but it's. It's 0 0.05. <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> Someone in the chat might know what then, normal bias is. And then, and then, uh, and then the position, we just, oh, that's where it's going to live. Cool. So and then we add that to the scene. Got it. Uh, and then, and then, um, and then the direction? hemisphere light is, um, uh, it's a light that lights two different colors from different directions. So there'll be a, a skylight. So it, point, it, it, it kind of shines a light down on one color and a light up on another color, which is useful if you want to kind of simulate a reflection from the ground or anything like that. Cool. Um, just, so we just add that to the scene. Real quick on the directional light. Are, um, am I missing where we're setting like the angle for it? Like, you know how directional uh, lights come in from all over? Is, is, is that the position set bit? Yes, I think I think by placing it up there, it's kind of that defines the angle. I think that's right. Okay. Um, so we're yeah. saying it's there, yes. so it's pointing that direction. It kind of, it's always trying to point to zero, zero, zero. So if you okay. place it up here, it's pointing that. Got way. it. So that's the D. Yeah. So it's it's going to point here. So where, wherever you move it, it's going to. Got it. Yeah. All right. Um, and Liam says bias just modifies shadow edge density. Not sure what the default yes. is. Cool. That's yeah. I remember now. Uh, Thank well, you. I don't know what the default is either, but ours is uh, 0 0.05. I do know that. So, and that's perfect. Yeah, that's exactly what we're looking for here. Uh, okay, <laughs> Odo Odo Rule says docs say that the default is zero, and we don't want that. We don't want zero. No. We want close, but worst. not zero. Yeah. <laughs> cool so a plane so we just want something on the ground um so the plane is just um just just the flat surface uh, it's 100 by 100 and then we're uh, giving it a, a material which is the color of the ground um and then they by default come in at this sort of like facing towards you so we just need to rotate it so it's fitting flat uh, oh, okay. and then okay. also we want it to tell it to receive shadows um and then we add that to the scene too okay so uh so this part's the one that flips wait no this is creating okay it. so what was the yeah flip so bit? you got two every everything every kind of thing you add to the scene has two parts to it as geometry which tells you what shape it's going to be and then uh, a material which tells you what it's going to kind of look like and then you kind of combine those things into a mesh and that's what gets drawn to this to the to the scene cool. so we need we created a new mesh and it's going to be this shape with this material so awesome. you do that on every, almost everything so that's what the floor is now um, and we're telling it to receive shadows from the lights and we're going to um and as i say rotate it back got it that's that's the rotation bit got it okay cool yeah and, and then, then so scene. yeah and then and then so on resize uh does what it says on the tin it, it, it kind of it create it makes sure that this uh this box fills the screen so now we're cool. not now we're filling it and that's all that's I, doing is it's as i resize it will continue to yeah, because of this event yeah. listener here, right? I'll continue to fill the screen. That's right. Yeah, and it's got to do it's got to do a few things because it's no all well and good just re resizing the the canvas, but you also have to tell 3JS what the new sort of size is, and it updates the projection matrix so that no, it now knows kind of what ratio to draw those things at. Got it. Now um, this you also is pretty change the plate, right? Like this. Yeah. This stuff all, is, yeah. 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 Just exactly, let, and the same with the, the pixel. Yeah. <laughs> 
and then so also the pixel ratio you want to set at this point which you've all you can already you can set that once and leave it but when you when the resize gets triggered when you change monitors as well so if you were to drag this to another monitor with a different pixel ratio ah. it triggers a resize um even if you didn't resize your browser that window it triggers sense, that yeah. so you can then then adjust for that pixel ratio oh that's cool it's, it's good to do that here never thought of that that's really cool awesome and um, then that's yeah. all it is awesome but we're not rendering anything still. We've just got a big black box still. And True. we should have a floor and we should have some lights. So this is what the last bit's doing. We're telling right. it to draw every 60 frames a second. Got it. So tick. Uh, okay. So we're looking at the we're camera saying, target. So we're saying the camera. We, yeah, we always want the camera to look at the target. That way we can animate the target. Got and it. we know that on every tick, the camera's just going to adjust itself to look at the target. Um, and then the renderer, we say render, and we give it the scene we want to render and the camera we want to render it from. So you can have multiple cameras in a scene and you can flip whenever you want. You can say, actually, actually start rendering from camera two and you can be like some sort of TV director and just switch cameras if you wanted to. That's um, cool. But we're always just going to render from one camera. And then we ask it to, to do that every, every animation frame. Cool. And cool. Then, so that's and then the boiler page. Off. Nice. Awesome. And so, so that's kind just... of everything we need to kind of get the 3JS rendering. So now we need to do a whole bunch of things, I guess. We need to think about what we're going to build. I think that's the first thing we need to do. Yeah. And then we need to do the HTML. I think it makes sense to do the HTML layout first and then bring in some of those assets and then we'll start animating them to scroll. So I think that's okay. like our three steps. Cool. So chat, as promised, um, we, we don't have like the the finished version like sitting off screen to kind of go haha we you know they made this we're <laughs> looking to uh kind of get ideas and come up with with something to build we steve steve had an idea um i'm sure that you would explain it better than i if if well if i think would. it'd be nice so so it'd be it, it, on the same theme with kind of that airplanes it, it's kind of it would be nice to have that kind of transition between states because that's kind of fun too where it go it went from plane um to blueprint um it doesn't have to be to a blueprint it can be to whatever but it'd be nice to add one of those and it'd be cool to sort of have some i thought it'd be nice it'd be good for fun to have like a comparison thing so we could go like something versus something or and then we could have like a winner at the end of the page so we could have like you know two objects we'll, we'll scroll down we'll have like the stats for one of those things and then as we scroll up we'll add the stats for the next one and then and then and then we'll just decide. maybe we'll randomize it every time every load and one will be the winner at the end of the page <laughs> love it like something a bit simple and something yeah. silly as well like i like the idea of comparing two random things and we can just do be silly with it yeah no i i think it's great we're like uh you know like i'm thinking something along the lines of say this skunk is one of the things and as as we scroll it, it like zooms in and like maybe like circles the ears or at least points to the ear and says like superior yeah. hearing abilities right or yeah yeah i mean on the skunk you might point to something else but uh there'd be like <laughs> like yeah like it would circle like the nose and be like you know elite sniffer or yep you know, some yeah. some some stats like that that kind of uh that we're kind of stealing from like this wingspan right like th like the stats yeah. bit so uh and and then it would and i think it's important the animal or something yeah I think it's important that these things we can. I think I like, I like the idea of comparing two very uncomparable things. Okay. Uncomparable things. Like I really like the idea that we compare like an animal to a sandwich or whatever. Like, like the winner yeah. will be like something really some random reason. Yeah, yeah. Skunk versus taco. <laughs> skunk versus taco. That's that's quite the matchup. Okay. Skunk versus taco might be there. Um, one thing we did want to consider because um, uh we we want to try to choose one that's not too hefty right is that something that we're looking yeah, for the, the, i mean we could do and we can render all these things without too many problems but what okay. to do this i'm thinking in my mind it'd be quite nice to have this, the main scene which has the floor and the shadows and what have you kind of the, the start and then it goes into maybe like a blueprint version and then ends on like a trophies version which actually means we need three of every one of these objects we're adding so we can oh. we'll have to animate all three at once right. which is how the airplane one works so yeah. actually the airplane there's two airplanes on the scene and we're rotating and animating them at the same time and we're kind of masking one and showing the other yeah. there's actually two airplanes there so that. anything we add to the scene we're going to have to render two or three times Got or it. animate two or three times which again like you could probably get away with it on a lot of these models but let's just make it easy for ourselves today and and, and just go yeah. with something a bit low poly yeah, let's be let's be a little bit uh, what's the word um, responsible. 
Ooh, here's here's taco. So we do have skunk and taco. Um, what are we thinking? Would it, would it... I do wonder actually how the skunk would look. It has some animations built in, so I'm not too sure how. Yeah, I mean, we could how try does and do that. that? Work? And so one of the great things I've noticed about this market dot I'm I'm just gonna keep saying poimanders. Uh, Lucy, is that a French word that I don't know? It sounds to me to be potentially French, but I am also a very un, uh, uh, unsophisticated. If it is, I don't know it. It's probably French and you probably don't know it, even though you're native French speaker. Um, it's probably that. I'm probably right, is, is my guess. <laughs> the, the, the odds are in my favor, for sure. Um, I anyway, so, yeah. thing I like about this site over um, Google Poly, which is uh, sadly no longer with us, is this bit of oh it doesn't have a download starter project interesting they don't all have yeah it we don't need that today anyway so we'll okay. have them oh, we'll wait, grab wait, wait, the, uh... oh oh i think it just had to load maybe because now we have it yeah. or maybe huh. it generates them on the fly might that's super cool so yeah the, the the fact that like this is specifically um built with this use case in mind of you're, you're going to be bringing it to react 3 fiber or to 3js it's a romanized greek word thank you lucy appreciate it still have no idea how to say it or what it means but let's just keep going uh oh here we go written in greek liam coming through with the <laughs> all right we have to let's see real quick uh what does it mean what is it, what does it mean I know less now. Oh, it's a deity or attribute of God or mind. Mind. Okay. It's it's something about your 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 brain. It's about your brain. All right. Let's not get too distracted. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Wikipedia rabbit hole for sure. All right. So uh, where are we? Uh, or if if we're running with skunk versus taco, and we have two votes for skunk versus taco. Uh, what I guess should we, we should then, shouldn't we? Yeah. I think we may not have the animations at all. So we'll, um, and I don't know how that would look on a, on a blueprint screen. That might just be a bit plain, but yeah, this we one, can always yeah, switch it out. That's it a looks good a bit point. rubbish. We just, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. You know, yeah. We can, we can we'll switch it out, whatever. It's actually not too big a deal. So we can, we can go with it for now. And, and we could always just like run, run uh, like this whole site again on another Ooh, couple uh, of things. Liam says, just, te just tessellate it. Just add more polygons to it in the blueprint, you mean? I, I think I, I assume that's what that means. I think so. Skunk versus sandwich also works. Everything looks good, tessellated. Cool. All right. Well, we can yeah. give that a shot if uh, if it's if it's looking boring. All right. Cool. So cool. Uh, right. where do we so go from here? Maybe just grab. Or should we just grab those first and just download those? Yeah. So if we grab um, the model. So so the okay, model grab tab model. and just download the model. Oh, interesting. Okay. And that'll cool. load, download a a GL. Skunk. I went through this last time, didn't I? GLTF. GL. Yeah, because of WebGL. GLTF. Yeah. 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 yeah that's right yeah yeah this is okay, uh, that's right. what that's what we did last time yeah taco yeah i was saying all, all the all the combinations of that <laughs> um now do we put this into our assets on code pen yes please cool um and if if someone doesn't have a code pen pro thing where would you recommend they do well it? interestingly so if you go okay. back to um the the um it's not gonna let me do that. You know, that's really it happened to me too. You have to like select it for some reason. It doesn't like the um again those files in there for some reason. Yeah, it's funny. It might be oh, they were already named. That's nice. Yeah. Um Maybe. if you go back to the market, the download page, uh, and click on to, one of those, there here? is actually uh or to go to in, one of them. Here. Okay. Copy, Copy direct, direct link. link. Oh, that's that, handy. I don't I don't know what the deal is with them hosting it for you, but it does appear to be hosted. That's really there. handy. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to just. Yeah. Well, I mean, it seems I don't. I don't remember the bandwidth things with Superbase, but looks like they might be getting some storage through Superbase, and you, you you can use them right from there. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Right. And if not, I yeah. I mean, I guess if you've got like Netlify or whatever, you can host it on there and just throw it up on somewhere. Cool. Um, All right. Nice. Um. So. Uh, so what do we we'll, do with these? We'll leave that for now. So. I guess if it makes sense, if we're let's say we're going to go with a an intro screen that says, I know, taco versus gunk. Of course. And then we're going to scroll down and we'll go to the taco screen and show some stats there. 
and then and then the same for skunk and then we'll go to the winner so we need a whole bunch of sections to, to do that and the way i like to do this is have just each section be full width full height and it makes life a little easier for this um you don't have to do it this way i just think Got it'd it. be easier today so i think um if we make a section just in page just make a section with a class name section Cool. I guess we can, yeah, that'll do. Yeah. Um, and then in CSS, let's just make sure that that's always, you know, width 100% height, 100% or um, uh, vertical width, uh, viewport view width. Yeah, viewport cool. Yeah. Uh, section. Just like that. Cool. Yeah. And actually, you know what? Let's just add an outline to that as well. It's just a red outline, just so Makes we know sense. where they are. Just so we can see. Oh, it. actually, outline. Yeah, so it doesn't affect the uh, size. Yeah. Good call. Cool. And and it's had a few more of those. In fact, this might be worth just naming them as well. So if we go section and then give another class name called, um, you know, section. Well, okay. So maybe we want a. What, what we can do with this is uh, when when once we finish loading the assets, we kind of want the. We could have those things just appear. Or we could have them come in on the first kind of start as we start scrolling we come to the first title page I so maybe the first section is kind of just say start scrolling section or like so skunk maybe we versus just... taco uh so i think maybe it yeah yeah, yeah. i mean i think actually it may be nicer to have that as just um just scroll and then okay. Skunk versus Taka can be a part of the animation for the next session. Got it. So that'll come in yeah, and so sort of animate in. Just do scroll down or start yeah. scrolling. Cool. Uh, oh, let's make these flex as well, just so they get rid of. Because what happens is it's adding, it's taking into account the padding and margin from all these uh, elements. So just make that flex, and that gets rid of all that problem. Cool. Ooh. Did you ever think when I'm like, hey, you're a professional web developer, would you like to come on and teach us about professional web development that you'd be saying skunk versus taco multiple times throughout that stream? <laughs> I mean, last time I, yeah. I, I had you turn a, a, a cheeseburger into a drum kit. So I I don't know which ones. I don't know. This is, I, I, I think, think this is the, this is the dream. I mean, burger drums yeah. are nice, but skunk versus taco was the dream all along. We need to settle it. People have been. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been too much for yeah. too long. This is an important question. <laughs> cool. Okay, so, so let's section. add let's add all our sections. I think that makes sense to add all our sections in now. So we'll have um, let's just call that one. You know, skunk stats. <laughs> skunk stats. Cool. Um, nice. Are we adding the classes? Yeah, let's do that. Just because um, what might make sense is um, like we'll probably have sides for each thing. So Taco will be on the left and the skunk will be on the right. So um, we may want the skunks. I can't say it. Skunk stats to be, you know, um, flex justified to the flex end. So you know, so we can we can adjust those things separately. Got it. Okay, so we're doing uh, taco then, stats uh, here. Yep. Yeah. Cool. And then let's for now just have one more, which should just be the winner. <laughs> Skunk tacos. Liam says. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Is is there like a grinder one? That, we, like... <laughs> that could be the end. Sorry, no one's the winner. Soon. Sorry. <laughs> Skunks are precious animals. I they kind of like them. Um, all right. So uh, yeah, we got scroll down. Skunk versus taco. Skunk stats. Taco stats. Winner. Nice. All right. Cool. So well, so how we're we gonna do this? So so. When you do a uh, scroll trigger, um, there's a number of ways to do scroll trigger, but the way we're going to do it for this particular thing is we're going to say um, each animation is one second long. And time doesn't matter too much. Like this animation, this timeline could be one second or it could be two minutes long. It doesn't matter because we're assigning it to the scroll. So we're kind of scrubbing it like a YouTube video, you're scrubbing that YouTube right. video. We're going to be doing the same. We're going to use the scroll to scrub through this animation. So the amount of time it takes is sort of irrelevant. But if we split each section into one second intervals, that helps us then find when the next animation needs to start. So that will become clear later when we start doing it. Cool. Um, so, but that's so kind of how we're going to run. With scroll trigger, it's not about um, the time set to the timeline. Uh, that determines the speed, but it's how fast I scroll that determines the speed of the video truly, right? 
Well, yes, that's, that's assuming that you're um, scrubbing. So you don't have to. So you can use oh. scroll trigger to say, as soon as it's in view, just run this animation. Got and an animation it. can actually just run as if it's been played like normal. So then in that case, time would matter because you'd want it to take one second to appear or whatever. Got but it, it, if soon you just say scrub equals true, it then becomes irrelevant. It's now being controlled by the position of the, of the scroll bar. Cool. All right, great. Uh, and we so may do both on this. So okay. what makes sense is we're going to have one kind of like main timeline, which is going to do the animations of these objects as we scroll down. But then we can have like, for example, the stats that come in, they will be separate scroll triggers with separate animations that just run when that particular bit comes into screen. It's just going to run the little animation and then it will just carry on. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. Um, so I guess the first thing we should do is... Um, load in these these elements and stick them on the on on the scene so we're going to need um we're going to need uh, the loader so that's going to be the so we need to import that okay uh, at the top there we need to import the gltf loader like that uh yeah so i got it i got it here too because i never remember i always have to look this up no worries and then it's in um so it's in three examples jsm so as you start hopefully Oh, it's not going to do it here, is it? Nope. So it's uh, so copy this. Yeah, copy, copy the that. sky pack bit, yep. and then slash examples. Yep. And four slash examples JSM uh, loaders, and then the GL GLTF loader. Oh, like that. Uh, okay. Like uh, yeah, like you have on the. Uh, cool. That's it. Yeah. So that should bring awesome. in the loader. Um, and then we need to sort of um, define what we're going to load. So let's go down to the bottom here. So we're keeping this simple. So we're all just going to do, um, we're not going to do classes and we're not going to move all the code around. So we're just going to kind of do it in order, which isn't the greatest way, but it's just quick. So if we make a new um, a new array, just call it um, to load or something. That's what we're just going to run through to load. Cool. Um, and then we'll um, make these objects. And we need to define the file, which we'll grab on the assets panel. Missing keys. Here we go. So file, uh, and then we grab skunk first. Is is file the key that you said? Uh, what's that? Um, yeah, that can be. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't okay, matter cool. what it is, but yeah, file makes cool. sense. Um, and then Talk we're going to need to... Um, Let's just go with that for a minute. We're probably okay. going to need to um, store the loaded file somewhere too. Um, okay. But let's just go with the file for now. So that's it. So we now need to run through that. So on load, uh, to load on, you know, for each. Wait, what? On load. Bash. Yeah. So, well, so on uh, to load for each. So we're just going to loop through this array. But we actually need to make our loader first. So we need to um, create a... Well, we need to create two things before we do this. If we just just above this, okay, just um, above this, we just do. Yep, we need to create a loading manager. So just make a loading manager equals new three loading manager, like that. Yes, it, and then that's going to be a callback too. So we want that to that will be called when everything's downloaded. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, down, uh, so once everything's loaded, that will get called. So if we run a little function in there, um, and we'll just um, have it, we'll leave it blank for now. But in there, we'll put a little, um, you know, a little um, setup animations function. We'll call that somewhere. Okay. Um, and then we need to make a GLTF loader as well, which we'll then use to load. So. Uh, should we just call it loader because we, we're importing? Or should we call it something else? Uh, oh, load is fine. Lowercase would work and then that's new gltf loader yeah and then you need to pass the loading manager into that so it knows the pass got it the, what what to call right. so we um we will need to um well so so now in the in the load loading for each so we can bring that back in now so you don't need to uh, make cool. a new GTL, gltf loader for each one we just use the same one for each right makes sense so we'll just okay, do um, so, item or whatever uh, yeah and then we'll just do a GLTF um, loader item file, and then a callback there. So there's another callback second. after this one. That's yes, it. Cool. And then that's gonna that's gonna 
bring back the model. So maybe put a model in there. Call ah, it what you like, it. but I think yeah. So that's going to be our model. It's just loaded. Cool. Um, now just to get it working, uh, we could just do um, scene dot add model and just see how it looks. Hopefully, we'll have two things. Oh, what's what? We got an error. Yeah, we have an error. Let's see what that is. Jetf loader is not a constructor. Is it not? Um, am I importing it right? Do I need to? It might not be anything if this link is wrong. Uh, let's have a look. From CDNs going pattern there three examples, GSM loaders, GLTF loader. That looks right. Do I need and to do then... .js or something? I might, I'm vaguely remembering something like that. Nope, doesn't seem to do anything. Um... Just call and just um console log it. Just make sure we got something there. So we'll yeah, just see what that is. Just gonna comment this out real quick. Oop, that's not how you comment out things. Nope, that's still not how you do it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery how to do that. No. So there we go. No, that'll be it then. So let's see where we're going wrong there. So oh. Oh, oh, hang on. Let's go, go back. Did not. I, yeah, I did not. How did I? What? Just. What did I? What? Cancel? What did I just click? Huh. I. Uh, that's that weird. weird. Sorry. I was. It's all good. Um, let's run. um let's put that in the curly brackets. That's probably where we're going wrong. Okay. So I wasn't sure. Let's see if that. Uh, yep. We got a GLTF loader now. Cool. Good call. All right. Uh, so. so let's try and add that to the scene again. Of this. Oh, another error. Oh yeah. Let's see where we went wrong. Um, is it gone? Error might be gone. Huh. Have a look at the console then, because that should be working. We should have it. Oh, we got add model for some reason. Just add. Ah, okay. Got it. I I took add model as add model function. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, still GLTF loader is not a function. Um, are we new GLTF loader, loading manager? Oh, dot load. So GLTF loader dot load. Sorry, that was my call. Cool, no worries. Getting closer, three GLTF loader, mm. no. Draco loader is Ah, provided. right, okay, so this is where we're going. So, so some of these models are gonna be compressed. That's what the yeah. Draco loader is. Um, uh, we could fix that, but it's going to be a bit of work. So we might be just better off just choosing something different. Okay. It's cause, just because it's the easiest, but the best way to do the Draco loader is to run it as a, because quite a processor intensive thing. So you kind of need to run it as a, a web worker and that's going to be difficult to do in Copen. So let's just, God. I think we're better off just choosing something else. Let's, let's find out which one it is. It's probably uh, okay. this one. It's probably this one. I imagine it's, it's this one. Is there a way yeah. to Actually, tell you what, let's um let's in the to load, because we're gonna need to name these. So in the to load, let's let's name each one of these as well. Okay. So we've got file and then let's give it a name too. So we'll need that later anyway, so and we'll just console log out the uh the name. Cool. cool. And then we just So then in here. Uh, well, that actually won't help, will it? Because it doesn't necessarily mean that's... Okay, it's probably... Oh, it's a taco then, maybe. Let's see. I don't know. I, that might not work, because it's not, it's not synchronous. It's, yeah, it's, I'm just going to get rid of it, one. So that's not going to... Oh, yeah, that's the idea. Okay, so taco... Yeah. Taco Surprise, is that throwing an error. Impressed. Yeah. Oh, oh, so you're you're blaming the skunk. You think uh, it looks like they're both that, actually. They're both. Hmm. Both Draco loaded. So, All right, let's just try another one. Let's see if we can find another one that isn't. Yeah. Is there a way to tell from here? Extensions oh, require Draco mesh compression. Right. Let's try and find one that doesn't have that. Extensions require. So we need two for that one. Interesting. All right. Let's That's see about pirate ships. Uh, chat, can you help us out? Um, see if you can find something cool that does not have uh, a little requirement here with extensions required Draco mesh compression. 
If not, we might be able to figure out that Draco mesh compression, but if you can find something cool, it seems it, it, this might be, honestly, the way they do all of them. That's I don't really think so. I think I have loaded one or two of these in before without okay. them, I'm pretty sure. Cool. Let me know if you find anything, chat. Uh, let's get this iPhone X. Draco compression. Oh, no. Zombie car. Draco compression. Uh, we might have to fix this then, don't we? No worries. Stairs. Oh, here we go. The you witch doesn't. The witch the doesn't witch. have any. Interesting. I would not expect that. Uh, where's the witch? The druid. The young Corrigan. Nope. Nope. It's a witch. It's like a purple witch. Okay, I'll keep scrolling. Maybe near the bottom of his alphabetical order. There he is. There she is. Back up. Back up. Oh. Ah, nice. Okay, cool. And do these animals then? I'm guessing these are all similar. They look similar, don't they? Yeah. yeah here we so go. maybe we can do an animal comparison. What do you think? Well, bear versus witch. Bear versus witch. That works. Or, that. or duck versus witch. I don't know. What's funnier? Okay. Isn't there like a, a Monty Python thing about like if it, if it, if if the uh, witch uh, if if someone floats, they're a witch. So we could do like you could play on that. Like the duck can float, but the witch doesn't float. Sadly, I, I I have to break it to you that it's not a Monty Python thing. It's an American Salem witch trials thing, and it was right. not it was not fun. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a uh, okay. But it it was yeah. mentioned in Monty. Python. Yes, yes, it was. But, it, it was referenced because it was a real thing. Uh, but yeah, but we okay. can do. All right, so maybe if it's a real thing, maybe that wouldn't be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Uh, I think Liam's, uh, yeah, linking to the witch burning trial thing. Yeah, uh, and uh, well, actually, I, I, you know what? It's definitely not just an American thing. It's probably the Crusades also. It's probably just, yeah, it's too, too soon. soon. <laughs> Thank you, Eleven. <laughs> Very true. I still haven't gotten over it. Uh, Louis is here. I can only stay for a short time and checking to see what's happening here. Yeah, we are. You came in just at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good to see you, Louie. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we close out of that. Okay, so which versus what? Um, basically, anything made by Kay Lausberg seems to be uh, fair game. Do we? I think you can probably click on her name and or, or, or oh, their name. Yeah, I should say. good call. That is a link. All right, so. Lots of cool oh, stuff. Cool. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, th I think okay, uh, witch versus animal of some sort here. Let me see. Actually, yep. uh, let's actually do... Uh, I was going to do a poll, but that might take a little too long. Because I, I can do that here. And I like to sometimes remember that I, I have powers in Twitch. Um, all right. <laughs> what do you think? Witch versus bear or duck? Alithia's here. Hey, hey Alithia. Good to see you. And Adam's here. Oh, man. T Twitch Witch. <laughs> Duck. It's this website with free 3D models similar to RIP Google Poly. Yes, but I think the better, um, the better, um, what's it like, um, <laughs> successor is the word I'm looking for, is poly.pizza. This actually has the, um, the poly by Google stuff where... Uh, the Poimanders market doesn't have anything by Google, but it's still a it still has a whole bunch of stuff and it's in that same spirit of let's give three yeah. assets free assets for the web. Um, I think these ones are going to be a bit tidier. They seem to put a bit more effort yes. into making sure that they're they're because like, I, I, you know you can see with the download options they're just a bit more kind of set up for this. Whereas Poly yeah. might be a bit hit and miss on the size and, and, the, and the materials. Yeah. Um, I, just for the sake of speed, I'm going to uh, uh, not upload this and download this, but I'm going to just paste in bear and see if we can get it. Oh, that's beard. Uh, see if we can get bear working. Uh, oh, uh, and uh, witch. Bear and witch, right? Those yeah. are the two. That's taco. Sorry, skunk versus taco. We'll have to have a rematch at some other point. Um, but witch versus bear is quite a matchup. Uh, copy direct link. And let's see what we got. Dang it! Not a not an instance of three dot object three D. Oh, we need to add the scene. Yeah, that's 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 my fault. So we need to add okay. the scene. So we're we're telling it to add everything, but actually we need to add the dot dot scene. Okay, cool. Well, that's we we got a step further. That's awesome. Nice. That is a horrifying uh. mashup. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. 
We've combined them. <laughs> we we meant to do bear versus witch, but we did bear plus witch, and I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah, that was uh, not something we needed to see, was it? That's not the that's not the answer we needed. Hold on, can I can Should I just we, say, um, just hold on? I gotta reach out real quick. Um, uh, <laughs> Adam goes, every time I'm acknowledged in this chat, I get momentarily confused as as if I'm live on screen and I do a little wave. I love that. <laughs> I, love, I love the thought of that. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> the Bear uh, Witch Project, El Evidente. Phenomenal. Ooh, Phenomenal. Nice. All right, cool. We should Let's, maybe call it that. Yeah. <laughs> We do need to go back actually and rename all our um, uh, our HTML things because we got tacos. Oh stuff, yeah, we, we do, we do, we do. Okay, uh, so skunk versus taco, bear versus witch. Bear stats, witch stats. Oh. Awesome. All right, cool. And now so bear um switch nice. Just to make life a little easier, well, first thing we need to do, these aren't casting shadows, but um, let's move the camera back a touch, actually, because it's really close up, isn't it? It's I agree. We're a bit I, uncomfortably close. I, I'm not looking in this direction, actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm keeping my eyes averted. It's staring me down, man. Um, all right, where's our camera? Lights, camera, here we go. Yeah, so is it It's this one? That one. Uh, yes, that one. So yeah, move that one back. All right. It's it's a bit a better. Bit so that's, they're not casting shadows, and we want some shadows. So what we need to do is, once we load it in, the first thing we need to do is um, run through the scene and just tell every, um, every material to receive and, and cast shadows. Um, the code for that is... So we need to traverse. That's the word I was looking for. So we need to go model scene traverse. And that will go through uh, and Dot and grab traverse? everything. Just traverse. The Dot traverse. traverse. Like that? Yeah. So that will go through everything. That will deep dive through the entire model and pick up everything. Is that a so function that's child. on scene? Or is this something I just that's on like arrays and things that I've never used? That's on any 3JS Okay, object, so it's, a, it's specific to that uh, prototype. Thing. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. So cool. but it, you can do it on pretty much anything. You can do it on a group. You can do it on... It's just a nicer do it on a scene. It's 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 recursive and it'll go through everything. Like it'll go down every tree. Cool, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So you, you see, let's um, let's item or child it might be worth doing child just child, so we know cool. what we're looking at here. Um, cool. and we just want to quickly check it's a mesh because they're not all meshes. Some of these are going to be groups. So we want to do if child instance of child uh, uh space instance instance cool. of. Yeah, and then three mesh, so all caps. Underscore, Cap right? Or... Yeah, that's cool. it. So, so if it's a mesh, we want to say the child needs to receive shadows, true, and cast shadows, true. Perfect. And then... Awesome. Uh, and then... Why is that not working? I that should be working now. Hmm. Am I getting oh, these properties off. correct? Let's, let's check. Let's see what if we're actually getting any of those. Three mesh. Okay, we're getting stuff. Yeah, it's getting these, but... Receive shadows is—is uh, is that the right property? Receive shadows. Receive. Oh, shadow. Ah, shadow. That'll be it. Good catch. Nice. Yeah, there cool. it is. Looks great. So um, we could just add this now. Well, we have just added this to the scene, but I like to put these things in groups just in case we need to um, animate. So uh, we might not do this today, but it's useful to be able to animate the whole thing and maybe individual elements inside. So if we wanted these guys to sort of animate, to like fall in, we could animate the scene of each one. Um, but then we can also animate the group so it doesn't affect 
scroll trigger kind of part of it. So cool. let's create, if you scroll back up where we're defining the onload, yeah. um, if we just um, add another thing to that, so we've got name, we've got file, let's add a group as well. So the group that we're going to put it in. So you can prettify this format. Wow, that's spaced out, but oh well. Okay. Um, let's just go group. I just added a whole bunch of... And it's actually going to be a new three group. Capital G for group? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. All cool. right. And then, and then we'll do this there. and then a comma there. Just cool. To... Thank you for the follows. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, you can cool. need a, You need a comma at the end of those groups. I sure do. Cool. And then we're going to add... That group to the scene and then we're going to add the the child the the, the model scene to the group got it sense. so yeah so instead of this we're going to add um uh what do we so call item this? to load item yeah, so, oh, oh, so oh. we're going through to load, it. So we're cool. item. item dot group yeah and then uh we're just what do we add and then the model, so what you just cut cut out that other one. Cool. And then we'll add the item group to the scene. Just it just it just gives us another thing we can we can animate and and, and, and play with. So um awesome. now um just make life a little easier later on because I don't want to have to we don't have to go through this array just to find the the witch and go through the array to find the bear. So let's just create a new um or a object called models. Um, just above this or whatever, and just make it empty for now. Cool. And then down here, we'll just say models and then name Got equals it. Uh, um, below the scene. Add? The group it doesn't yeah, really matter. That's fine right? there. So models dot or item dot name yep. equals item group. Cool. Now we can reference that later. So now that's cool. all working and it's all loaded in. So now we once. So now we have two models being loaded we can go back to the model manager a uh, loading manager sorry cool and then the way we got this kind of callback let's make a new function to sort of set up the animation so if we create a new function called setup animation or something so set so create that out here yeah yeah we might want to reference things outside that function would that allow it might be okay wouldn't it you want to do uh normally do the arrow, arrow? functions cool yeah do just... that I don't know if it makes any difference, but uh, equals. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Sorry. Good. There we go. Cool. Uh, cool. And then we just call that from loading manager at the end. So we need to let's move these into a nice starting position. Okay. We could. Should we have them off screen first, and then if we scroll down and it says which versus bear, they kind of move yeah, in. Like they're not there, and it, and it like they they come up or yeah well so like, here's the question do we want to animate the camera down to where they're standing or does it because it doesn't make sense for them to come up through the floor or to like slide in from the side how do you want i guess we could do, do both we could yeah let's do both yeah because okay. that makes sense because then we don't have this weird floor so let's uh, let's do both so let's for now move them slightly off screen okay because uh that's where we want them to start so if we go to models dot which dot position uh, is, is it capital? I think I did capital. Also, way? but to ask if I should drop it, probably should. Uh, which and bear, cool, cool. Uh, dot position, and then I guess it's going to be the X. And if we move the witch off to the, is it bear versus witch? We call this or which versus uh, bear? bear versus witch? Yeah. We want to move the witch off to the right, so that's just going to be like I don't know five or something. Cool. Oh, and then we do the opposite. It's gone, but I don't know in which direction. We'll see. I should be right. So yeah, that way will be do to you the have right. A better and sense minus of will be that way. This than I do. Cool. All right. Nice. Cool. Uh, and then now we need to set up the uh, scroll trigger. So we could just create a timeline here and 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 then just 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 assign scroll trigger to it. But scroll trigger has this nice thing where it can do media queries. 
So what we don't want to do is have this really over the top massive 3D animation happening if the user has prefers reduced motion on because that's going to make them feel really bad because that's going to be a lot of stuff moving around. Right. So we want to make sure that we are paying attention to that. Cool. So the first thing we need to do is um, go scroll trigger. So all caps. So uh, where do you want me to put this? So just under yeah, setup. So just after this uh, position. In okay. this setup Inside. animation, cool, this cool. is all part of the animation. So scroll trigger, uh, like that. Yeah, and then it's called uh, match media. So match capital M. capital media. Yep. Yeah. No, no. So you're right. Oh. You're right. Cool. Uh, and then it's an uh, you need an a pass an array. Uh, so an object, sorry. Okay. And then it's the uh, then the first the 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 key is the um is the query. Prefers so brackets, reduced motion, yeah. basically. Yeah, so we're going to do the opposite. So we're going to do prefer, prefers reduced motion, no preference. So if they don't have a preference, okay. we'll do the animation, if not. So what this is doing is scroll trigger, and you do this for um, screen size as well. So you'd say like on mobile, you might want a different timeline animation scroll trigger. Makes sense. So you would say, um, so you, you pass it that, and then you pass it a function, and then it kind of manages that. So you, we all pass it a function and say, create our animation. And if it, if if the if the media query matches it runs that that timeline if it doesn't it won't awesome um and real quick cool. uh garaba good to see you um and cassie just got in here cassie just landed right in the nick of time cassie of green sock and svg and just being wonderful fame um so cool what are we uh so and, this and, needs, and, yeah this needs to be uh, brackets in here so brackets um like you would in css so no it is a string okay um it's a string and then like in css it would be in the kind of normal brackets the uh, uh no not square brackets see how do they have these like proper names parentheses parentheses isn't no no so it's a string but then it's um then it's the normal kind of non non square non curly brackets just the brackets that's the, the ones yeah parentheses <laughs> is is what I don't know. I I don't. Oh, right. I think Cassie calls them curly right. boys or something. I I, I forget. Um, but all right, cool. So prefers. There's reduced motion. And then no preference. So if there is no preference, we is will that colon. Uh, I think it's. Syntax? I think it's inside the bracket still. Parentheses. Colon. Yeah. Oh, colon. Oh, no. Cool. Brown that. boys. That's what it was. Round boys Round and curly boys, boys, boys and pointy boys. boys. Yeah, it's just an easier uh, thing, right? It's just easier. Yeah, I think it's yeah, I think that's the way they, they should be officially renamed if they haven't already. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and then we're gonna then we need to we need to make a function to do this, and that we'll we'll just we'll just make a new function again. So we'll just pass a function called I don't know. Uh, Let's call it desktop animation because it's kind of going to be the desktop animation. And if we get time, which we we'll probably won't, but we could have an animate uh, mobile animation. Okay. Uh, we're not going to call it here. We're just going to reference it here. So Got GSAP will call that cool. later. So now we need to make that function too. So let's just create desktop animation. And this is where the fun begins. Cool. So we need to create a timeline. And that's going to be, this is going to be like our main timeline. That's going to do the entire animation and we might make little mini animation uh, timelines for the rest of it but let's just make this time timeline so, so const yeah that's perfect is it, uh so is that full or is it lowercase uh okay for gsap and it's going to be new because it's a new new timeline Thank so it's a new gsap timeline it has to be a timeline not tl oh I, unless that works i don't actually know does that is that a thing might not be We'll see. Huh. Um, and so, so, okay. so as I said before, like what I tend to do with these sort of things, because we have these fixed height sections. What I want is every kind of section to be one second long. Uh, and we'll, we'll explain it now. So if you uh, just above that now, above the timeline where we just created that new timeline. Okay. Uh, just create uh, um, um, a variable. So let section equals zero. And this is going to be where we tell the animations where to start. 
So um, by default, I want every animation to be a duration one. So we can do that in the timeline. We can set defaults in the timeline. So if we create a new object inside there and say default equals, and then we kind of just like every animation we create will have these defaults on it. So, um, so an object in here, and then we'll say duration one. And we'll also add a nice ease in here too, because um, I think the default ease is like an ease out. We want an in out, just so things don't suddenly start moving. We want to just, uh, so maybe like a power two or something, power two, um, ease in, uh, in, in out. I think it might be lowercase. Cool. Uh, I think I, it's just I in out now. Camel I case. always have to do the reference for this. I always go to the ease. Thing. Yeah. So get, get rid of the ease and then it's, it used to be that. I think you're right on the old one, but I think it's just in out now. I, I don't give me too much credit. I was just typing what you were saying. And so that's all it was. <laughs> I'm just dictating is all it is. <laughs> Marlon, okay. good to see you. <laughs> cool. cool. Uh, and then um, we may as well set up scroll trigger too. Um, yeah, let's do that too here. So we can so we set scroll trigger up here in as well, as well. So we set that up. So after default, we want to set up scroll trigger. Ah, inside this timeline object still? Uh -huh. Cool. So yeah, so scroll trigger. And then I east of the object too. And we're going to listen to, we're going to assign it to, so the trigger is the page. So the thing that's holding all these sections. So it's going to be dot string dot page. It's going to be like a, it's going to be a, a query selector for page. Cool. Can you, uh, or, or, so, or at some point, you know, to write the second, but explain the trigger aspect of, of, of scroll trigger. If, if it'll be easier yeah. to do once we, once you have it built that, that that makes sense, but I just think that concept took 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 me a bit to get, and I probably still don't have it. So, yeah, okay. Well, we can maybe run for it now. So, so tr scroll trigger. That's the thing. It's going to be like watching. So, where it, trigger is a thing that it's going to say like. So, you can say the trigger uh, when we come uh, in and out of. So, we might say the trigger is th this section, and when it's in and out, that's when. I think I'm saying that right. So that you could. So that's the thing we're going to be listening to on scroll. I think that's right. Okay. We're, we're, I, yeah, I think we'll it'll be easier once we see it. it. Yeah. Like I always put yeah, the markers right. out and stuff like that. So we'll see. So we cool. want that trigger to start when the top is at the top because at the top of the page. So we do start, and then a string wow. that says um, top top. Top top. And then we want it to end when the bottom is at the bottom. So we do end. I think it's end. Yeah. End. Bottom. Bottom. So that's kind of where it will go. So, but then we also need to tell it to re uh, play on the scrub. So we now need to say um, scrub. So you can do scrub equals true. And what that does is it does uh, it, it matches one for one. Let's go one on one, right? If you were to jump down suddenly, like uh, you know, like a page, the whole animation would suddenly just appear a page up. So if you set that to one, one second is going to be a bit laggy. Um, but that that would be one second, so it would like it would lag by a second. Well, it, it would complete this, the animation. So let's go by point one. I think point one will probably do it. To be honest, awesome. we want it to be pretty much super quick. We just got raided by Jason Langstorff and crew. Jason, thank you so much for that raid. That's super oh, nice. super awesome. Uh, welcome everyone. We are learning from Steve Gardner how to do uh, a bit of three JS and GSAP green sock scroll trigger. Um, real quick, just to kind of give you a taste of where we're going. Um, we uh so steve has created lots of 3d and scroll triggery goodness before this is actually his code pen from i think almost two years ago now no 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 it was last year it was around yeah last year yeah. june ish i i want to say uh, but yeah as you scroll through this airplane flies around and it goes through and uh it it goes into like a blueprint style and so we're learning how to do this from steve uh, with kind of our own creation, we had the chat choose what we're gonna compare one to another. We we settled on uh, bear versus witch, and so we, we we've got them both rendered, but off screen right now, and we're working on the animation. So we've we've got like the three D models in place, and now we're bringing in the um, the green sock sc scroll trigger that's gonna allow it. So as we scroll down. Uh, the camera's going to move, the models are going to come in into the center, and then we're going to like zoom around them and do all kinds of cool stuff like that airplane did uh, in that demo. So you're you're just in time. Pull up a chair. Uh, and thank you again, Jason. Great great to see everyone here. So thanks thanks for coming through and thanks for that raid. Cool. So we, uh, we were just talking about Scrub, and this will kind of 
um, give kind of an ease to the scroll, right? It's not going to be like as instant. It'll kind of blend down to it. Yeah. Or, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And because it, it's quite short, it won't be, it won't be too laggy as well. So I think that's kind of a good compromise, but we can, we can play with that as, as you see it in action. Cool. Um, so now, now we need to start and doing the timeline. So we need to start animating these objects around. So let's, um, this after the, after your timeline. So we're just going to, let's just move something just so we can see it working. So let's just do timeline two or TL two. And then we'll do models. All right. Um, models. Dot. Uh, through the witch, witch. the bear, uh, positions. All oh, right, positions, and then and then the X, and then we're going to say X. Let's move it back to uh, which side is the witch on the right, wasn't it? So let's say one, just so they come in next to each other rather than. Uh, we don't want them to merge again like they did in that horrific. Right, that was horrifying. Um, <laughs> but this is this is going to be relative, right? Or. Is this going to be relative to where it is already? So are we adding one or is this going to be setting it nope, to nope. absolute? So we're, we're telling it to go to that coordinate. So we're okay. telling it to go back to one. So we've set on the setup, we told it to go to five. And now it's going to start at five and it's going to end at one. Okay. Um, but the thing we're going to do here is we're going to add a, the third um, parameter that you can pass into a two. So you can, for a timeline. So the first one is the thing you're going to animate. Second one is the object with all the parameters you're going to animate. And the third one is where you want that to start in the timeline. So we want it to start at zero, but we're saving that in the section that we, we created just above here. We created Got section, we called it. it zero. Okay. So we're going to pass in section and we're going to always pass in section on every single one of these. If Got you add it. in after the X equals one. Okay, sorry. I was just reading what Cassie that. was saying. Um, so real quick, Nikki says, uh, or he basically asked if if that's what you made for the New York Times. I don't believe this was for the New York Times, just for funsies, right? Yeah, just for fun. Um, but, the, but yeah, I mean, that's this kind of thing that like the New York Times and whatever you would, would like, do like doing. That's kind of, this is yeah. a great tool for kind of right. storytelling, data and events and things like that. Yeah. Um, and then Cassie kind of answered my sort of question where X percent is relative to the element with DOM elements and SVG, but we're not sure about 3JS objects. So it might not be relative here. Um, and yeah, so yeah, it's, we're it's not, not sure. Cool. All right. Awesome. Uh, you were saying you, you gave me a direction so and gonna... I didn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so we're going to another comma and then, and then section. So that's just going to, at the moment that's zero. We're telling it to start at the zero cool. at the very beginning of this timeline. Cool. Um, so let's, um, before we do any scrolling, let's um, go to HTML. All right. And then let's just hide all the other sections apart from the first two. Okay. So we want uh, those so two. Got yeah. That one, that one, and then we're going to comment out these. All right. Now, yep. So fingers crossed when we animate now. Why hmm. is that not doing it? I don't know. Do I need to pass the other? Uh, does it matter if I don't do XYZ? I don't feel like it should matter, but. Um, no, no, you don't need to do that. Okay. That's fine. Are we, are we getting that far? Are we even setting up the animation? Uh, let's see. We may have got ahead of ourselves. Uh, to onload, let's follow it through. Uh, no, it's never, it's never console logging here. So, so we do, let's see, do we call do we get to the, on the loading manage? manager? Does that ever get complete? Loading manager. Setup animation is what that, oh wait, setup animation, desktop animation, All right? So let's go here, uh, loading manager. Let's do setup animation. And then are we calling this desktop animation? Yeah, we are here as long as yeah, it's a this scroll is trigger, correct. We'll call this that might if... not be correct. That might be the thing. We'll see. Um, yeah. So how far are we getting? We got a 401 for maybe, huh? I don't know what That's that is. That's a co-pen thingy. Uh, loading manager, setup animation. Okay, so this isn't working. So we're setting up the animation. Where did I go? Setting up the animation, but um, this isn't being called. This match media bit. Okay, match media prefers reduced motion. Where's that gone? Uh, keep scrolling out of it. Yeah, so my uh, it, it's not picking up um, the oh reduced. I wasn't. Reduced. I should have asked. I was typing. I was like, yeah, I should have asked. All right, let's see. 
Still nothing. Okay, well, that's, but, but that was one thing, lagging. but that's not it. Let's see if it's uh, lagging. So. Here. Okay. No. So we we are now logging to that spot. It's just not GSAP not defined, but that's a all caps. We've got GSAP all caps. GSAP somewhere? target GSAP undefined, defined. not found. So is the models dot oh, right. is this dot scene or dot models dot which dot We add the group, don't we? When we do models which... Oh dot group. Mm, we added the group, so that which is the group, I think. Uh Item.group.add. No, it should be added onto this group thing, right? So we add because which. Yeah, so we add that. Yes, yeah, so if you go back down. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Models. Oh, you're right. No, no. You 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 are correct because we add models. Sorry, I'm I'm getting conflated. Oh so, yeah. So we so down here we got models item name equals the group. Right. So that That's should it. be correct. Correct. Yeah. Um. Let me take so let's just console log it did. out in the setup. Uh, reduce. Just console models which. Let's see what we got there. I don't know why that would be a problem. Oh, is it position, not positions? That That's what makes it's more be. sense. I wasn't sure about that one. I need to just speak up more. Let's see what we got. Yeah, all right. Look at that. Cool. We got it, everybody. So uh... It's coming. <laughs> nice. So that, that, now, now. It's, now we got it set up. It should start happening pretty quick. So cool. should we go? So should we go back to our setup animation? Our um, setup desktop, whatever it was called, setup desktop animation. Uh, yeah. Where's cool. that? Desktop so animation. A bit further Here down. Bit, cool. Down, 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 down. So now we want to animate the bear in at the same time. So if we just duplicate that. Cool. Bear. Do bear. And, and then negative then minus one because we want it. Yeah. Cool. And section and stays the same the because they're animating at the same uh, position. Right, because that's the position exactly. parameter. We want them to animate. <laughs> <laughs> Here they are. This is so fun. <laughs> uh, oh, good tip, Cassie. Cassie says, uh, add markers true so we can see uh, when it's starting. Well, because this is one giant timeline, it's going to be just one giant marker at the beginning and one giant marker at the end. But that's... Got it. We, yeah. They will be useful later on if we when we start doing the... Chopping um, up the timelines or... Doing the uh, stats, when we start bringing in those stats. Cool. Right. So now we need to do. So we need to kind of know where they're going to go. So we kind of need to start thinking about where this HTML stuff's going to live. Ah, we might need to do a bit of HTML. All right. We need to plan ahead. All right. Um, yeah. Free to do. All right. Uh, so got section bear so, stats. All right. So, so now, maybe so now it's going to go all the way to the bottom, right? Yeah. Now it's based on. Yeah. So that's it. See, so now we're, now they're not in line because we're not quite. We're telling it one second. It's going to be the entire thing. So they're, right. they're, they're moving in slowly. So that will fix itself once we start adding the other animations in. Okay. So I think maybe if we're doing bear first, maybe we want the witch to disappear again and the bear to sort of get a bit closer. Maybe rotate. That's a good call. We're gonna we're, we're gonna do the scene changing thing a bit later. Cool. We'll just um, do that for now. And Lithia says uh, she doesn't use GSAP often, so it's exciting to watch this. And Corey's here. Hey, Corey. Good to see you. Um, oh, uh, oh, and I think Green Greenstack JD is. I'm, I'm guessing Jack. Uh, unrelated. Don't use new before timeline. It should just be const tl equals GSAP timeline. Okay. Nice. Cool. That's good to know. Thank you. Get rid of that then, Jack. Uh, where did where did I put that? New. Here we yeah, go. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate need, that tip. I needed news. Cool. Cool. Um, so we um, were going to plan this out, right? So, uh, yeah. I think maybe that, that so that bear, bear versus witch maybe should just be like in the middle of the screen with a nice little font, maybe. That sounds good. Do we want to handle that first or do we want to do all the animation and then we can worry about CSS and stuff after? I think that right, kind of makes that, the most sense, right? Okay, cool. So let's move this bear then. So let's go. So so uh, if we go back down to our timeline then. Okay. So we got both of them coming in, and then we want the bear to kind. Of, we want the the witch to disappear again. We want the bear to sort of maybe rotate and come forward, touch, and maybe sit to the left. So yeah. we've got room on the right for the content. Cool. So let's do that. So so press. Um, so let's go down a couple. So this is going to be the next section now. So we want to uh, increment section by one. Section two or something, right? So uh, section. Plus equals one. Plus. Yep. That's cool. It. Thank you for that. Now, follow, ben. now we know. Then it will always. All the rest that follow will always start at position one rather than at zero. Right. So let's make. Let's get the witch back out again, so the witch can go to. 
Uh, to five. Yeah, was she at five? Yeah. Quiz match at five. Okay, cool. Let me just... She comes in and then she should hopefully yeah, leave again. Awesome. So, she goes. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so we actually, we kind of wanted to go, we don't, we don't want it to ease back out. We don't need it to ease out. So we can change the ease on this. We had a default ease in and out, but I think we should okay. just have the ease in here. So let's just change the ease there. So, and let's make that up like a power four or something. So she starts off slowly, but then we, you know, she disappears pretty quick once. That's just uh, ease in. Uh, no, no, you don't need the word in. They don't need the ease anymore, so you just say in. That's it. Cool. So that she should start moving a bit slowly, but then she'll just still get out of the way quite quickly. See. Okay. That, I mean, because it, it's compressed over, like, the timeline yeah. stretched a bit. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's happening a bit slow. And then the bear position, I guess we probably just want it to move forward. Okay. So we can leave it at min minus one, but then we want... Um, Z or... Yeah. Z. Let's go Z and then have that move like to two. Let's see what two looks like. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Nice. And then should we okay. have it move over or should the camera move? Or 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 is this or is this fine and we can do the stats here? Let's see, yeah, let's just leave it like that for now. We can okay. play with it. But at the moment we're out of sync with the section. So let's just get all the other sections done so we're in sync again. Awesome. And and then and then solo. So let's do the next section. So let's just copy the entire section plus one, what have you. And then we're gonna say the witch is gonna switch we're gonna switch it basically. So the witch is gonna be at one and Z two. And then uh, we'll want her to ease, ease in, uh, ease out this time. So we wanted to start appearing quite quick. Okay, so should I get rid so of what? this or? No, just go, just change that to out. So, 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 like we don't want her easing into strut. We just wanted to be moving and then Got just it. ease out. So she slows down. And the same, yeah, exactly that. So we want it to ease out, but then once it's gone, we don't need to, to slow down when it's off screen. Right. Um, um, so when it goes and Z, then, so that, zero for zero. him, and then X is negative five, Minus. right? Yeah. Cool. And then one more, which is the um, winner. So maybe cool. we'll bring them both back in. Just for now, we're just slotting back in this in Four. their start positions. All right, cool. So X is one. It's going to drop the E's for now. Let's go Z zero yep. just to reset it. Um, yep. And then... Get rid of that comma. Uh, this one's negative yeah, one. Cool. So that all should right. all now sync up. So we Let's... should hopefully be in the title screen when they're together. Bear versus witch. And then and they'll animate to the new position for bear stats. We'll nice. show bear stats. And then we can keep going. Witch and then uh, witch stats. And then we'll be back to the oh, winner screen. Oh, chat. Check it out. That's so cool. That's working awesome. And you were right. As soon as we got it set up, it was like... Now we can yeah. really, like, like, once we have a hold of everything, once we know where everything is, um, we're able to really just move it around and do it real quick. That was fantastic. Yeah, and that's just why we do these sections. This is why we say every animation for each section is one. Yeah, And then we great. can just increment this section thing, and just we're just we're just keeping it in line. It's just a bit easier that way. That's real cool. Awesome. So, so now we get to finesse it. Now, and add some, yeah, add some so we details. can either finesse it or we can do the slightly more complicated thing of having the scene kind of transition to the blueprint thing, which oh, is a bit of work, yes, but yes, that's yes, kind yes, of yes. like the cool thing. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that. Well, let's we? do it. Yeah, because cause I, I uh, think like from here, I feel like I could figure out how to uh, rotate the bear and show a specific spot and like move, move them around. I don't know if I could figure out how to do the blueprint thing without like digging through your code. So I would love for us to do a bit of that. So yes, absolutely. Okay. So there's a bit, it'll be a bit of setup again, just to get it working. But so let me just explain how it's going to work. So this, I mean, there's a number of ways you could do this and shaders probably is the best, most performant way. But what we're going to do is we're going to say, um, 3GS has this thing called, or WebGL has this thing called scissors where you can kind of say, I want this part of the screen to render and I want this part of the screen to render something else. Uh, and you can kind of just split up the screen it's good for when you're doing vr and you need the screen to be split and you need Got to render it. two different things for that so we're going to use that okay and we're basically going to do we're going to change it slightly but we're going to do the same kind of things we did in airplanes but what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to on the render so on the tick we have this render where we say render the scene and this camera what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through 
an array of scenes and say, render this scene with this camera and then render this other scene with this other camera underneath it. Got it. So we have, we have simultaneous so scenes that are animating the same way, but one has the blueprint style and the other one has the normal style. And all we kind of do is like, when when we scroll into one section, we do that scissor technique and we show the blueprint and then we bring back the normal as, as we scroll past it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's right. Yep. Awesome. So let's get this bit of setup. So, yeah. so, so now we're going to have more than one scene. So where we create the scene, we're going to have to create two. Two for now, just to do the blueprint. We might make another one if we want to do this kind of awesome kind of trophy thing at the end. Oh, yeah. Um, that's so really that's, cool. That's... Um, Let's go. Let's go back up the top. Okay, all the way to the top where we create the scene. Yeah. Okay. So where we create the scene, we need to make two scenes now. So let's create. So we create the. We call, we have to rename that scene. In fact, let's make an object. And it's called scenes. Okay. And we're going to uh, store right these in two here? scenes. Yeah. And then we're going to have. Um, I don't know. Should we call it like real life or something or real? Let's call it real. And that's yeah, going to be a scene because we're going for realism. So I think that that that's a good, that's yeah, a good yeah, thing photo realism. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> all about realism here. Yeah, so real just, uh, just, is that an object or is that? It's just a new scene. So that's just down there, bottom there. We have like a new scene. Just the same thing again. So we're just going to create a slightly different scene for. Them. Cool, and then, uh, and then we'll have why. Oh, I need. Oh, it needs to be brackets as well. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And then this is wireframe or just wire. Or just wire. That might be easier, right? Cool. Yeah. And then again, a new scene. If I can type it. Cool. Cool. So down the bottom there now. So where we're adding the fog, we actually only want to add that to the real scene. So now we're going, now we should change this to scenes.real background Got color. It. Equals uh, scenes. Cool. Yeah. And then, and then we do this the same one? the background. Okay, cool. And, and then let's this. just change. Or not yet. We're going to get crazy hours. Uh, yeah, get rid of we can get, yeah, let's get rid okay, of it. Cool. Let's get rid of it. It's going to break things because yeah. we're, we're referencing later on, but that's fine. Um, so let's, um, let's create a new color because we want the blue background, don't we, for um, the wireframe. So let's just yeah. make a blue. Yeah, yeah. Got an blue idea. Do. Steel blue, whatever. Is that hyphen or is it? Like that. No, I think that's right. Yeah. Cool. That's right. Let's try that. Um, and then let's let's just let's assign that to the background of the other one. So scenes scenes dot wire background equals. So just duplicate that one. Scenes dot wire dot background equals new. I probably should just type this or copy this, but we are here, and it's too late. Um, I saw Alithia ask a question. Um, so it will be up eventually on this page. I now have like show pages, uh, for each episode, still working on them. If you've been on the show and your page has barely anything on it, I just launched this before the show. So like, there's still not much around I'm, I'm working on them, but, uh, but it'll, it'll be up here if you want to find it specifically. Um, but yeah, cool. Uh, so we got that background. Awesome. So we just, should we just go through and continue to let's uh no let's leave it for a minute so okay. let's um let's create another array as well so we got scenes and we want to reference that as a model uh, uh as an object so we can like we just done say scenes dot real but we also need views which will have a bit more information about how big that view needs to be so if we make a new um array where at right here here's, that's fine probably yeah yeah views equals array cool and that's going to be an array of objects again so we're going to say so the way we're going to animate this is we're going to have um so the way it happens is the scissor you say where the width is um and the bottom i think i think it's like that we'll have a look in a minute but basically okay. i want to say where the bottom position is in percentages and where the height is in percentages okay so when when something is full screen the bottom will be zero and the height will be one because that's full screen Got and it. as we animate through a section the bottom the top the the main the real life will animate um the height will be different but so the animate so height will animate to zero and the bottom will animate to one. Got that's kind of how that okay. will move up the screen. Okay. And then the other one will do the same. In fact, we won't do it for real. Real will probably just just stay there for now. Just because we're going to. Oh, and we'll just have the other one 
cover it and we'll it, just have it. Yeah. it'll still be behind there and that just makes sense that's just fine right now yeah i mean it's not you know you ideally want to move one out and move one in and whatever but let's just go with that for now cool so let's so so let's add um height and bottom to these height, height will be um uh, one for the main could be the main one i guess so one bottom zero so it's okay f- actually let's make it height 0.5 let's have both of them show at the same time for now awesome let's that's really smart it. cool uh, and then let's have let's have the bottom 0.5 too so this will be the top one okay let's see that so the height is going to half and it's going to be halfway up Got it. And then um, here we're going to need to define the scene as well. So we'll just say scene equals scenes real. Um, right in. So here. after bottom. Oh, okay. Got bottom. it. So, so later on when we're comma, rendering, we know which scene we need scene to render. Equals scenes real. Got it. Cool. Okay. And actually, Let's you know what? We're going to need a camera as well because you need a separate camera in that scene too. Oh, uh, that's our camera. Sorry, I just wanted to format that, but it made it tougher. Uh, okay, so camera in here. Let's just have that as null for now. We'll um, we'll generate the cameras in a sec. Okay. Cool. Awesome. And let's do the same for the other one. And just pretty so much got... reverse, or for for the height and bottom. Height will be the same, but the bottom will be zero. So it's, it's half it. height, but it's at the bottom. Yep. Oh. And the scene is wire, yeah, and the camera is null. Awesome. And then, um, so now. When we create the cameras, we just need to run through the views and create the cameras in there instead. Cool. If we find the camera, which might be right here. Yeah, cool. So let's just let's just surround that in a in a in a, in a loop. So cam uh, so views dot for each. Got it. And uh, Cassie says, "I love how Steve organizes his code." By the way, I find three JS a bit wordy and confusing. So this is really nice to see. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, it's, it's, it can. It's one of those things. And a lot of the examples you see in, of 3GS is just like one giant thing, which is kind of what we're doing here. But I do like to separate the, the scene stuff into like a class, scene class. And then I kind of don't have to look at that again. I can just say, here's a thing. I want to add it to the scene. Just sort that out for me. So I normally would split this out a little bit. Um, but we've got these comments. So we're, we're kind of we're, we're going for a flow. So it's hopefully quite easy to follow. Yeah. Um, uh, so. So that's like right. This? So now we're just rather than const camera, we're just gonna say view dot camera equals that perspective. Got camera. it. That's nice. And then we're gonna do scene. I guess we'll have to keep this inside the loop, and then do scene dot add dot view dot camera. Right. Uh, we'll also the view dot scene dot add because the, the scene is ah, now part of the view too. Ah, right. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> starting to get. Starting to get. And a the inception. the camera. T- the yeah. camera target doesn't need to be a part of this loop. We can have one target. It's not really a part of the scene. It's just a sense. coordinate that we're saving. So that, that can just sense. that can just be a that well, one thing. Yeah, and that should stay okay. constant across both of them, or else we're not going to get that that cool like reveal kind of feature if if if, if yeah, they're not lined exactly. up perfectly. Okay, cool. Right, I need to look up a bit now about the whole view. So we need to fix all the bits where we're adding things to scene. So you can't add the same object to, to two scenes at once okay so we need to clone our witch which sounds like a bad idea and we need to clone our bear <laughs> cloning witches sounds like a terrible magic idea magic and science to together just... is just a disaster <laughs> that's not oh man well we're going to try it and see what happens <laughs> so when we do our load we're loading in these uh, models uh, oh actually let's fix this while we're here so while we're here the lights whoa. and the floor Hold on, what's that, like Cassie? Thank you so much for those gifted subs. That's super, super kind. Really appreciate that. That's just beyond kind of you. Thank you so much. Wow, that was fantastic. Um, yeah. Sorry, you were saying, Steve. Uh, so before we do that, we need to all the, uh, the floor and the lights uh, need to be added to the real scene rather than just scene now. So let's go and fix that while we're on while we're heading down. Okay, so. Uh, real, got it. Real, uh, see views. In, nope. Uh, scenes, scenes dot real. real. Cool. We we'll yeah, add the floor to that. Cassie. That's so kind. Um, and then the light too, yeah. right? Because this other one's yeah, not going to have any lights. It's just the uh, oh. the materials will kind of take care of what what we can see. Um, anything else? View dot scene dot add. We're good there. And then, uh, scenes the floor, floor. We done. yeah we're not gonna need the floor or oh oh already did that Whoops. we've done that yeah my fault all right i think that's um, good cool and then here we're so, gonna need right so yeah it's now to loop through views 
So we now we need to just take everything we've got here, apart from the request animation frame. That, that needs to be outside this loop, but everything else needs to be in a loop now. Um, um, or over views. So views for each. Yeah. Got it. Cool. Um, and, this and we'll also have to fix the resize as well, because the resize is resizing one scene. So let, let's um, let's do that now before we forget. So if we go back up to the on resize, okay, we need to loop over the camera there. The same thing again, views for each, and then we'll just we'll just fix those, both cameras at once. Got it. Let me just hit enter for each uh, view. Cool parenthesis there. All right, nice. Um, and then view dot camera. That's right. It. This is a really That's nice it. way mm -hmm. to organize this. I, yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot of. Uh, I, th I thought it'd be a lot tougher to fix this up. This is really nice. Um, uh, yeah. And then let's let's go down to the render and basically the same thing. So we got the camera now. So we want the we want the views camera to look at the target. And then we want to render. So now there's something we need to do in between oh, okay. this, and it's that set up the um, set up the scissors. So okay. um, we need to work out the height. So basically, we need to times size height by the height that we want it to be. Um, that makes sense. So um, so, and then we also need to set. So this is a pixel thing. So we need to actually get the proper height from from the the height of the of the viewport. So this is coming and into the we need bottom to do that bit, for. right? Like the 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 height and bottom bit or like yeah 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 so we need to turn height into what that percentage of the real height so so we need to create one so we need to let's create a new variable in the render uh in the there tick? inside the inside or the loop because we'll need it um inside tick or right. on reset inside tick. in the tick cool so there so let's go let uh we'll const um bottom bottom yep equals and it's got to be the um the uh the size height so the so that's set when we resize so that's going to be the height of the window times so view dot height or wait size uh, height. so yeah the size height so we're taking the height of the viewport and we're timesing it by got it the view height okay this will make more sense in a bit i think all right so size height size times... Height, times view height okay and that's kind of that's where um, so a view bottom, sorry. So we're, we're setting bottom. So that's going to be where the, it positions itself at the bottom. And we need to do the same for height. So let height equals size height times view height. And just uh, for the chat, size height we're getting from this on resize. Um, it's just the container width and height. Well, it's just the height. Yep. Cool. Okay. So we're, we're basically converting a percentage into pixels, so that's the pixel position on 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 the screen. Cool. And now, so now we need to say to the renderer, we want you to render this this bit here, not the whole thing. So this is uh, where you go renderer dot set viewport. Oh. Um, and then we want the it to start. P capital or is it no? It's just no, the viewport, just right? that. And so cool. it's this is the top top left, top right, uh, top left. X, Y, so it's going to be a so set brackets. Right. We need to pass in um... that. No, no, so it's, uh, it's a function, sorry. My yeah, bad. cool. Okay, no. Uh, uh, so zero, zero, so we're going to start at top left. You say it's an array or zero, zero? Um, zero, so... yeah, it's, yeah, so it's, you, you got it right there. And then cool. the next one as well is going to be the size width and size height. So that's kind of the viewport, that's the whole thing. And then after that, we then say we want the scissor. So the bit we're going to cut, the bit we're going to... That's it. So that's it. That's the end of that one. Cool. The new line. So renderer set scissor. This is cool. And then that's going to be zero. So it's going to start on the X. And the um, the bottom, so the uh, the Y is going to start where we've set bottom. So it will, So this needs to be bottom. And then we need the width, so it's going to go to the, the width of the screen, so size width. Because we're, and then it's we're going never to to... cutting the scissor on the side, it's always going to be no. full width, but the top and bottom yeah. change. Well, we could. We totally could. If you wanted yeah. it so, like, you know, one side of the screen was, like, the witch's yeah. kind of room, and the other side was the bear's forest, you could totally render it like that. Oh, that's really um, cool. That's cool. Um, let's let's then... go with... Um... 
height. So this is now just the height. Cool. So that's how, that's how tall it's going to be. So that's how far down it's going to go. And then is this view? Uh, and then seen? one thing we need to do, one more thing we need to do is render a set scissor test true. So that's going to be a function uh. again. That's just telling it to do the scissor. I don't know why it's called um, test. But that's a, that's a that's a function as well. So just pass uh, in true. Cool. Awesome. I think we've got some errors. I'm not entirely. I think that's because we're still trying to add cameras. These defined, characters. So we need to do. Uh, this needs to be inside the. Oh, it, it is. is we just need to just, just go. View dot. Cool. All right. And I uh, think where, where we? I think we're going to have errors at the uh, model loading as well because we're still trying to add the models to the main scene. Ah, uh, okay. Well, I think here too. So view dot scene. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And view and dot camera. Awesome. And then yeah, down here we have more. This is looking good already, though. That's we're getting the half and half. So bit. we're rendering the two scenes. Yeah. We're just not adding the models to a scene. So we'll right. add that to the top scene for now. Where where? So, uh, um, where's the model dot scene dot traverse child? There you go. You scene dot scene. add. So so let's is... add that one to scenes dot real. Okay. And then let's create and so see how we got models. Yeah. And and then we add the group. Let's create a new object called clones. And we'll do the same. We'll create a, a, a clone in the clones object. So up by models, we'll do, something we'll do clones. Yeah. Yeah, so game time. Mm -hmm. we're, we're getting into kind of a more, uh, I'd say, somewhat more advanced um, feature or like sort of thing. But but what, yeah. once you kind of understand, like, like what we did is we just ran back through and now we're we're creating a camera twice and just putting it into each scene so we, we we've got two different scenes and we're going all right instead of create camera and add to scene we're going create camera for this scene create camera for this scene but have it be the same settings and you'll see you'll, you'll see what well it's it's because we want it to do this kind of an effect right this effect is a little bit more advanced. And so that's why uh, these are actually two different scenes. The, this scene has the real look, and then this scene has the wireframe look. And so um, all, uh, so here's the, the scissor effect in action, right? So it's, it's, it's going up and it's at the top now, right? So that's how that's working. Am, am I saying that right, Steve? Yeah, that's right, yeah. It's actually slightly different on the airplanes one because it, it, it's doing the scissors. But it's not rendering two different scenes. It's rendering the same scene with different layers. You have this thing in, in 3GS called layers. You can actually tell uh, things to turn off and on versus layers. I don't think that's as good as way. I think this way is now better. Awesome. Um, for, for another reason. So so I cool. think this is, this is the better way. So well, this is good. Awesome. So um, we need our clones, right? Clones cool. object. Cool. And now we need to clone each one. This is where either like, you know, well, hell will break loose because we've just yeah. cloned a witch. So yeah, so <laughs> models. Is it clone? Is it clones or clones? I think you're right. Clones. S. Look at that. Uh, so I, item, item dot group dot clone, and that's a function. So we want, we need to, we can't just add the group to that. Wait. Uh, we want item dot group dot clone. Actually, actually, no, 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 no. Let's um, let's make the clone first. So just up there, just do const clone equals group clone. Okay. Um, where is that going here? It's just above the line above. So line, you know, yeah, just that's it. So let's just do clone equals items group clone. And then we need to add that to one scene and we need to add that to our clones object. So that, so uncomment that and just pass in clone. That's the one. And then we'll also add it to the, the wire scene. So scene wire add clone. And so we should see the same thing in both. Ah, yeah. So that just doesn't have lights, and that makes sense. Why is it not? Oh, and that's why it's not showing because up. Because we're, we're animating. We're still animating one. the other yeah. two. Okay. So scenes have this cool little thing where you can say, "Look, this scene, everything in it, we're going to override the material." So rather than going through this clone and say, "We want this material to be this," we want this material to be this. Right. We're just going to go up to where we create the scene, and we're just going to say, "Scene." I think it's scene material override. Let me check. Uh, we need to create a new material as well while we're at it. Um, yeah, so it's an override material, it's called. So okay. let's make a new wireframe material. So just before we start creating these scenes, 
Okay. Um, let's create a, a new material. And it's going to be, um, uh, let's just call it wireframe material. Yeah. And it's going to be a new mesh basic material because that doesn't react to lights. We don't need lights right. to see that one. Cool. Uh, material. Oh, it's actually a material as well. That's it. And then we're just going to pass in the color white. There's an object there. And color equals white. Cool. And then also we want wireframe to be true. Ah, nice. Cool. Uh, and now we need to say on that scene, so on scenes wire, uh, we need to say uh, override material and then just pass that one in. Just like here? Or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, so scenes, cool. scenes wire. And it's override material. Dot override material. Uh, equals. So it's actually, it's not a function, that one. Cool. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have a wireframe. We do. In that scene. We do. <laughs> That's awesome. And it all overlap once you have the animation syncing up, but it's already looking pretty awesome. That's so really cool. Sort of, we can sort that out really easy as well, because GSAP can animate arrays of objects rather than just single things cool shout out to so ben real we... quick thank you for moderating that ben appreciate you um and and super quick since i just interrupted um alithia says is the scissors thingy more more performant can you explain more why you decided to do it like this um that's a good question so i don't think it is it's like if you're talking about like doing this with shaders uh like that would definitely be more performance if you like literally had every shader like you know react to a position and stuff like that um that would be better i imagine uh this is more of a time thing like this okay. is a quick way to do this and because we've only got a few models in here it shouldn't be a problem and you know cool. this this is how you do like the the the, the vr kind of rendering to your eyes so it's not Un not performant it's just perhaps not the best way to do this but cool. it's a it should be fine for this demo cool Thanks for answering that. Um, so let's go back to where we're setting up these animations. We need to do one little thing. All right. Animations. Uh, but before we do, so on the animation setup. Here we go. Let's create. Let's create um, three things. Let's create um, an object. So um, const cameras. Um, in fact, let's make it outside this function because we're going to need to. Um, yeah, let's just say um, null for now because we can't make it anything right now. And then let's have, um, in fact, that has to be a let now because we're going to change it later. There can't be a const Call. anymore. Trying to get over. Home will not be called. All right, let. Cool. Uh, and then we need um, witches and we need um, bears. And again, that's a let because we'll change that later. So what we're going to do, we're going to turn these into arrays of cameras, an array of which is an array of bears. Um, so, so in there now, yeah. So in there, we're going to say uh, cameras equals, and then we'll say um, dot. Uh, let's make it an object. Okay. And then say positions, because then we're gonna we can animate positions together. Then so positions equals an array of uh, views zero camera position. Sorry, what? That makes sense. So views. Views. Just... Views in there. Views. Yeah. And then we're going to grab the first one. So uh, view zero. Views. Oh, OK. Got and it. Got so it. Got it. Sorry. Zero. I understand. Um, and then uh, camera position. The camera dot position. And then no, sorry. There. So, so, so we're grabbing the camera out of that view. OK. Oh, OK. Camera. OK. And then we're grabbing the position out of the camera. So dot position. Got and then we're going to do the same okay. for the other one too. We're going to add the other one to that array too. So views one, let's add that to the array too. Okay. In fact, you, you could make this a, a map as well if you wanted to, if you just want to do views map. No, it's fine. I was just trying to figure out, I was trying to parse what was what was being said. All, all good. All right, okay. Cool. And then we'll do a similar kind of thing for uh, witches. So witches equals positions. And we'll probably do rotation just in case we want to animate that. So um, let's copy this and... Yeah. We won't grab it from the views anymore, though. So positions okay. equals, um, and then we're going to add uh, the uh, models dot which dot position. 
and this is going to be an array, and then we're going to grab the other one. The reason we're doing this is because GSAP can animate in any number, like an array of things. So okay. we're now going to say which is dot positions, and then just run the animation we've done before, and it'll animate both of them at the same time. Okay. So now we need clones dot which dot position in there. Got it. I'm, I'm starting to understand now. And then for the bear, we'll, now we'll do the same thing for the bears, right? Yeah. And we might want to do um, rotations while we're here. That so makes sense. Bears. And then let's copy the positions and add that to both of them too. Uh, I mean the rotation. Oh, why did it do that one? Ah, uh, because it was plural. That. And it, actually, you kind of you probably just want um, this to be rotation, just on these this ones. one up front. That makes so sense. It, yeah. And same with positions. Just make it position, just so we're cool. We're saying which is position. position. Cool. Uh, so now, when we go, which I have bears here it should be bear. Yeah. Cool. So now, what we have to do to fix this animation is to go to the animations and change which dot where whatever it is. If we go down there and have a look, so we got models which position. Now we need to just change models which to um, which is which is that position. Just yeah, so which is that position, and then that should that should animate both of them at the same time because it's animating an array oh. and we're moving them both to that position. Uh, bears. That was bears, yeah. I'm going to do it on all of them, so we have a few down there. Yeah. The set isn't working. We need to... Well, we, we haven't done... We haven't added that to the... Um, just above. Sorry, just below this. We go models, which position. So go back up the wind. Up, 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 up. Uh, there you go. Got line, it. line. That's it. So we just need to change that. And, and then... Um, that's the one. Uh, that's not going to work. So, so because um, that's an array, we're just saying this array True. should X. Because yeah. we can use um, GSAP set and do the same. GSAP has rather than two. GSAP oh, has a way of just uh, just um, GSAP changing values instantly. Set uh, or GSAP, which is that position dot set? So exactly. GSAP dot set. Oh. oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, thank you. That set. And then and which then is that position, and, and then, then it's going to be the object. An object, cool. That makes sense. That's a tidy solution for that. Um, and then bears, and then minus five. Uh, minus five. Cool. And then we just need to fix those last few animations on the next scenes. So it's going to work on the first bit, but it's not going to work for the rest of it. But that's already looking great. Like, that's already super cool. All right. Um, yeah, so we just got to go through and do the same thing everywhere. So which is... Which is... I don't remember if I copied the comma. I did not. Yeah, so the whole time it's going to be animating both, uh, but we're mm -hmm. not going to always show half and half like this. We're only going to do it when that, we go into a certain section. Out. Yeah. In a second. Yeah, this is such a cool effect. Awesome. Cool. So hopefully now if we run through the page, both of those are going to be animating yeah. in the same way. Awesome. Cool. So now just we need to animate those positions. So we just add that to the timeline. So um, in section, I guess it's in section um, two. So section if you scroll two. up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, where we bring one forward. That's right. So we're bringing one forward. So we want to say now timeline two, and then we're going to animate um, the uh, below. Or the let's see. It's going to be well. We can animate both, but actually we only need to animate one. So let's just do views one, um, and then and then we're just going to animate the bottom and the height. Uh, um, oh, so no, no, sorry. Uh, yeah. bottom. That's it. So bottom will now be um, uh... so we need to change it up to the top at the moment because so bottom will stay at bottom zero actually, won't it? But we want the height to be one if we if we're going to leave the other one where it is. So let's just go height equals one. 
with that. And let's make the ease linear because it's it's really nasty. It's not very nice when um, uh, the ease doesn't match the scroll when you're doing an entire yeah. wipe. It looks really off. So let's just do linear. That's it. Um, and let's go and set the. Let's just check that works. It should. It should. Yeah. <laughs> so let's um let's just start it at height zero, and then we're good to go. All right. So set it up here or. Oh, oh, start it oh, um, where we set it. Where, where, where we create we... views. Where the heck do we do that? Views, scenes, views. Here we so go. So we want height. that to be one and Heights the bottom one. to be zero. Bottom and that zero. one, so that's full of height. And that has to be zero, zero. Cool. Now, hopefully, once that refreshes, we should, awesome. if we scroll down to the other bit, it should hopefully. That's so that cool. That is so cool. It's... It is? A little out of sync though. It should be going up roughly where that red line is. So where are we? Ah, where are we getting that wrong? Interesting. Yeah, because it. Huh. We're telling it to do it at the same time that we move the bear, but the bear's already there by the time it's, like it's going. 50%. So we are we not adding section to the end of the animation? We are not. No, we are not. Good call. I forgot that bit. Um, camera switches. No, is that where we are? Section. Yes. There we go. Uh, without that, it's adding it to the end. Makes sense. There, it's pretty much. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, the ease isn't right. Yeah, something's off about ease. it. It's pretty darn close, but yeah, that, that looks like the ease talking. to me. Yeah, we'll just fix that ease, and I think that'd be good. Is the is linear what we're looking for there? Is it just quote linear? <laughs> what have I used in the past? They got uh, yeah, ease linear. Oh, uh, I think it's, it's just a typo, I think. Linear. None. Ease none, right? Yeah. Not ease none. That'll do. Still, uh, still not right, is it? Why is that doing that? Oh, well. I think it's good for right, now. It... Yeah, it's good enough, isn't it? Yeah. All right, and cool. then we could... If you wanted to do like the other bit then we would just add that to the views and then we're just so we could now quite quickly make another view that animates in because we've done the hard work now so adding another view is just a case of oh, kind of yeah, just setting that right. up yeah let's let's uh i don't know I, I don't know if we have time to do like a full um yeah i'm, I'm, I'm trying to think do we go for that last view i'm not sure if adding another one would be as uh informative because yes like like i feel like now i can figure out how to add another view and how to add another material i was thinking like you could get like a uh matte cap that's mm. gold right that's and what's... just add yeah. that on and it would look really so cool you do exactly that so you do the same thing you'd make a new material with a matte cap in it yeah and then and then you'd add that to that scene um like a uh, huge library of matte cap png <laughs> textures there's like a ton in here and we could just find like a cool gold looking one like this or something. Right. And, yeah. uh, and slap that on. And, uh, then we've got our trophy, right? You got like your, your trophy, witch or your trophy bear. <laughs> yeah. Um, so instead of that, do we want to just try to get, um, a little bit of text coming in, um, maybe for a stat or I'm trying to think of like what, what would be the most useful thing? Cause I think the one thing that I don't, I don't have a great sense of how to do it would be positioning in relationship to like the ear. Uh, if, if I, I wanted to have like, say some kind of like line here and like superior hearing written there, I don't know mm -hmm. if I would be able to figure out how to, how to target that ear, even if the ear is moving around. Okay, we it might take a little while, but okay. we, what we need to do is um, how long we got? Uh, we're kind of over time, so. <laughs> that, so that's I mean, I can explain how you, yeah, you would do it yeah, rather than maybe. Let's have a look. I've got another project somewhere where I do it. It's one of those things you, I don't do it often enough to know off by heart. So no worries. Give me a mo. Basically, you need a, a ray tracer. So basically, saying I need to know where this point is, and then you kind of. You kind of grab that and convert that to a screen space, and then you can come position it. Um, let me have a look. That's interesting. Yeah, because I I always liked the way that you were able to kind of 
line this up. Whoa, thank you well, for actually, that follow. I don't do that on here. So on here, I just it's just kind of, if you were to shrink that window, none of it lines up. It's just oh. kind of... Steve, you're uninvited. Oh, get, off, get off my... <laughs> No, it's still, it's still, yeah. I, I never know. Yeah, I could it's design. good enough. It's good enough. Yeah, exactly. So it's one of those things where, like, and so if you want to do it properly, I can, we can kind of have a look. I just no, no, it. that's totally fine. I, I wasn't sure if there was a, like a special trick to targeting with DOM elements, specific things inside yeah. 3JS. And so ray yeah, totally tracing is. is the, is the answer. Let me, let me, I think it's called ray tracing. That's something slightly different. I might have said the wrong word. Um, let me have a look. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, what's, what's the thing that like, like, um, if you were to use ray casting, so that's like, if, that's if you shoot it, yeah. like, yeah, if, if, if I'm making like a laser gun game and I want to see if, if there's like a hit detection or something, or I mean, for this, if I want to see if I'm clicking on the bear, if I'm clicking on the bear's eye, that's what I would use, right? For, uh, ray casting. Yeah. And that's what Alithia is saying. Uh, for mouse over effects, clicks on 3D stuff. Cool. So you can use ray casting in a, uh, like, like for absolute positioning or something like that. That's super cool. I, 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 yeah, I actually don't know. I might be lying to you there. Let me just. It's cool. I, I, I think, out. I think we've got some people in the chat who, uh, who seem to be a little bit more familiar with, with this specific aspect. Um, Alithia is linking to the ray caster. That's awesome. Used for mouse picking, uh, amongst other things. Awesome. Yeah, because I'm familiar with it in in this context of like I need to de de detect clicks, or if I want to have like the bear have a you know like change color on hover, then you would use the raycaster. Um, but I never thought to use it um, to you know position DOM elements ar around an object. That's really cool. Yeah, but, I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I, I'm thinking yeah, I'm gonna no find worries. it in time. No I don't worries. want to be sitting here just looking. Yeah, all good. Is. Yeah, but yeah, and this is the read the docs portion of 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 the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be very much like that for like twenty minutes. No worries. Going, yeah, hmm. no, I very appreciate it. Chat. Anything else you want to ask b before we uh, before we we head out? And uh, thanks, Steve. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm gonna chat for another couple of minutes, but I, I just want to make sure like like those were those were my kind of questions where. Um, you know, I I was curious how, how to do how, how to do this swipe basically, and let's get rid of the um, section so it looks a little bit cooler. Or sorry, the um, the outlines, so it's not as like debugging kind of look. Cool, yeah. So I just I I love how easy this is and how. So one thing we we didn't do actually, you know what? Let, let's do that super quick if you don't mind. Uh, animate the camera just coming down from like a little bit up, a little bit down, right? Um, yeah, that sounds good. So let's yeah. do that. So that's on the first scene. So that's the very right. first thing we need to do is set the camera up too high oh, first. Yeah, 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 we can yeah, do that call. when we make it. Camera, good call. Uh, camera target. No, that's that's not it. Uh, actually, no, that's right. The target is actually what we want to animate because we want it to look up. So we need a target to be up. Oh, so that's a cool idea. Higher. I was thinking, and I don't know camera terms, so I'm going to say them wrong. I was thinking a pan. I know it's not a pan, but a pan rather than like a tilt. Oh, I see. Um, but, so you want to move it up. So but a tilt's a cool both, idea. No, no. I just didn't. I just didn't have that in in mind. I I, I like the idea of a tilt. That's awesome. Uh, and then, then we're only moving one thing. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is that's left X. and right. So you want Y up so and so down? Let's make that. You probably five. don't have to go much actually. You only have probably have to go up to two or three or something. Okay. Probably try do three, it. and then camera target dot position. Yeah. So look, we yeah we can barely see anything here. That's that's perfect. Uh, okay, so on the first scroll, no, where are we? Setup animation. Yeah. Here we go. So okay. desktop just, animation. All right, timeline. Man, it got all weird. All right, here we go. So here, right? Right. So TL dot two um, camera target dot position. No, because this is actually just a vector three, so it doesn't oh. have a position. It's just animating that directly. Oh, so the dot one. X? No, camera target, and then Y is one? One. And then section? Yeah. Let's see how yeah, that works. Good. Let's see what we got, chat. Yeah, look at that. It, yeah, it's coming down a little bit. Let's make it a, a little more dramatic with uh, four. Let's just make it like really... 
Let's just ruin it. Let's just ruin your hard work, uh, <laughs> Steve. Let's just let me just get my hands like grubby little fingers all over your beautiful work. Um, scene views renderer camera. Here we go. Let's go four. I just want to really feel it like come down. Yeah, that's cool. That's great, right? You know what you could do as well. You what you could do is move the camera forward. So it starts forward. So as it's panning down, it's moving backwards. They kind of they kind of almost like appear behind you. Uh, okay, Try it. so Just move the camera forward a touch. Ca camera forward uh, at the start or or here? Yeah, have the camera start rather than I like, think it's like five. Let's have it start at two or something. Okay. Um, and then it's gonna move to five. Yeah. Right. So camera starts. So okay. Wait. It starts at starts that's a four so let's start it let's start it uh, no um, well that's the y that's that's, that's the y you're right you're right that's the i started it um oh, oh oh sorry so sorry no so we're looking at the camera target the actual camera itself uh, starts here so five so, yes so five let's move that one maybe let's start right near right really close like okay. uncomfortably close <laughs> and then we'll have to do <laughs> this twice because it's it's each camera actually yeah nope, we don't because we added that camera's oh yeah 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 yeah. So cool there. all right so cameras this is the last thing we're doing chad i promise um <laughs> uh tl oh, cameras dot position yep and that's um, z and that was five yep all right let's see what we got um <laughs> aaron just banned one of the letters how am i gonna do that <laughs> Make them jump, support game says. That's awesome. And G, no, good to see you. Um, here we go. So here we go. Let's see what we got. Uh, I just want to make sure we can see this effect. So we're scrolling. Okay, something oh, went horribly we... wrong. What did I do? <laughs> what did, did I do? do? Th this, this animation the didn't kick in. Cameras dot position. This camera's not, this camera's not a thing. Cameras. It's, it's animated. Oh, maybe it isn't. Cameras. Positions. Oh, that's I why. So just that get rid of that. There you go. All right. Here we go. Let's try it again. Try it again, chat. Oh, that's pretty cool. Oh, that's not quite as dramatic as I was hoping. No. Let's go forward a little bit. Chat, we're so close. We are so close. It's going to be uh, weird, actually, because if we move it further forward, it's going to kind of be facing backwards, if that makes sense. It's going to be yeah, like whoop, turning well, backwards. It's going to be looking at that point. Let's give it a go. That's it's we we acknowledge that it's a mistake and we're going full speed ahead. <laughs> oh, that's gonna look terrible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try it. I think it'll be alright. It still has like right. a, a nice like zoom. It's it's a lot more dynamic than it was five minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, an ease would help there, I think, because we don't need it to ease in. It's easing in still, so it's yeah. taking a little while to get going. So if we just were to change the ease to out, it'll probably get going a bit quicker. Let's try that. All right. Um... E, so in out, drop this or no? Uh, no, no, that's it. Uh, we're just on just on the out. cameras. In out oh, on the cameras, cool. So you're saying out so is, or in um, out? Yeah, and let's make it um, power fours maybe a bit much. What do you want to do? Make it a two. two. All right, two it is. Go for it. All right, let's see if it loaded. I think it might have. Yeah. Hey. Wow. I'm loving it. I love it. Bear versus witch. <laughs> and then we look at bear stats. The witch gets out of here. Bear stats are done. Witch is back in. And then, uh, you know, we could do at this point, um, do you, do you, do you want to finish off? Cause it, it wouldn't be long. Finish off just bringing this back to real. Yep. Let's do that. Right, so let's cool. grab and where then we, that is the, the um... true finish. That is the true end of this project. I promise chat. I just want to keep playing with it. It's oh. so much fun. Um, all right, no, we where is it? So, which is position bear? This right here, views one, right? Yep. Grab that. Yep. So, we want that height to be zero, but we also want the bottom to be one. So, we want it to get carried head on up. Cool, okay. Um, and that'll happen as we scroll towards this, right? Doesn't have to, we, we don't have to worry about it. Yeah, let's, let's check it out. Yep. That's the nice thing about this setup. Like, it should that should that's all you needed to do to sort of do that next thing if it works. He says that. That's awesome. That's so cool. It's so cool. And then that that scene could be the trophy scene where Bear becomes, you know, that that full gold uh, thing. Oh, yeah, oh, this one. I mean, you could actually 
not even need another view while the while the temp while the um while the the blueprint is in uh, screen you, you could, could just switch them that's a good point then, could you do that yeah, with so you with green sock or would that have to be a function that you that you like yeah uh, so you could you could it. do on complete on that one but then it gets uh, tricky yeah. when it reverses and stuff so you might you might not want to but okay yeah um i just dropped my little version of this in the chat but chat um the template that we started with that steve kindly uh provided for us gets you like off the ground because th 3js has a whole lot of boilerplate a whole lot of setup um, for a lot of projects and steve uh has some great stuff in this template like if i open it up again um you'll see that it's got a lot of settings that you might not know how to kind of put in and it's just a, a, a nice default to run with so that is um, all in oh, leave. That's all on this this page. And uh, if you came in halfway through or if you had to dip in and out, uh, the video will be up on this page. So bookmark this. Um, and also the, the market where we got the witch from and, and another cool resource is on there. Um, I also will have to put your um, Twitter and stuff on on this page, Steve. I I, I should have thought of that. I am gonna do it. I'm working on these pages as we speak. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, honestly, uh, we have a whole bunch of of uh, fun shows like this planned. Uh, so this was today's. Uh, on Tuesday, we've got the creator of Slinkity, Ben Holmes, coming on. So definitely be here for that. On next Thursday, one week from now, we've got Liam Egan, who I think might still be in the chat. Yeah, he was spoke like two minutes ago so if he if he's left uh i'm he is uninvited if he's left in the last two minutes he's <laughs> off no uh liam is a phenomenal uh, creative developer uh i know S steve can vouch for that too um and he is going to come on and kind of teach us about shaders in this same kind of format where we're not exactly sure what we're doing but we know we we want to learn about shaders and that kind of topic and it's going to be a blast um and yeah, uh, we got Ben Myers coming on to teach us Eleventy. We're going to learn about Chakra UI. We have Ryan Labar, who was in chat earlier, coming on. Uh, Astro, we're checking out. We have Olithia, who was in chat a bit ago, uh, coming on to teach us or, or, or to build a cool space shader for Component Carousel. Whole lot of stuff. So uh, make sure you are following here. Make sure you, you, you drop a follow because we got a whole bunch of stuff planned. I'm trying to book people constantly. Um, lots of 11 we, 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 we love to see it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, thank you so much, Steve. Let me actually plug real quick your, uh, uh, hold on, Steve, what's your website again? Uh, Steve VG. So it's S T E dot VG. There it is. Um, Steve's site is just, yes. And Andy Bell's cube CSS. And we're going to have Andy on. I didn't mean to skimp at the end. Uh, James quick with Oz zero and Andy Bell going to learn some cube CSS, uh, I'm not going to read that out loud, uh, Ark, Ike Cardinale, but that's very kind of you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, he, he can read chat, but uh, yeah. So Steve, you are fantastic. I would love to have you on anytime. This is always a blast. Um, thank you again, man. I appreciate it. Uh, it's been It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it really Thank was. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, and chat, hang out. We're going to raid somebody great. We're going to find them, and we're going to raid them, and it's going to be a whole lot of fun. We're going to keep this party going. Thank you again. And uh, yeah, make sure you're following. Make sure you are here on Tuesday because we're going to have uh, lots of fun next week. So take care. I'll see you soon.